show, everyone's favorite show, most likely not. As always, I'm here, your host, Dab, joined with me by the lovable, often imitated, rarely repeated, Ro. Say hi, Ro. Hey, how's it going? We have an extra special episode this week. We got an extra special episode with an extra special host. We got with us Soul So Breezy, the YouTuber, the prop palette expert. If you want to check out his stuff, of course, his link will be in the uh, description of this video on YouTube, and you can find him, I'm sure. Soul, say hi to the crowd. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Soul. Anyway, so let's just hop right into this, right? Let's let's not shoot. Let's not shoot the ship for too long here. Let's talk about those prop palette changes. So, so if you had to say, what is one big change that you've seen so far? I know there hasn't been too much. Yeah, there, I mean, there there are a number of like high level changes with regards to like tanking in general, like uh, magic damage reduction. That's kind of it's, it's kind of dipping a little bit. There's a there's a lot less for us to look forward to. Like as a prop paladin, normally when I use my shield of the righteous ability, you know, that's supposed to provide like a flat damage reduction no matter what. But in this case, it's going to be changed into just physical damage reductions. It's just like an armor increase based on how much strength that we have now. I mean, that, and, and that's going to be, it, it's going to provide like some, some big changes, especially like during the pre-patch, you know, when things get all wonky uh, right before the launch of a new expansion. So there's going to probably be some adjusting uh, here and there to compensate for the much less damage, uh, magic damage reduction we're going to have. But it's hard to say like how big of an impact that's going to really be. Because when you, because when you think about it, like tanking isn't just about what you can do as a tank like how much damage you can uh you can mitigate but more so the encounters that you're actually dealing with like if a boss or you know trash or whatnot is only doing so much damage and uh then then what's the point of having all this different kinds of reduction if if blizzard ends up like nerfing the damage output that comes from dungeons and raid bosses and all that sort of thing so it, it's still really a wait and see approach yeah with regards I, to damage reduction and, and how that's going to play into the game yeah i've heard um that across the board a lot of things tanks are seeing a move from damage reduction like the percentage based thing the armor um do you think it's gonna be a positive change like increasing the prevalence of armor instead of damage reduction or do you think it's gonna be a negative change um I think it's gonna. I think for the most part, it's gonna be positive because at least this kind of flattens out the way damage is reduced across tanks across the board. Because some tanks deal with damage reduction very differently. Some of them, like a prop paladin, they just hit a button and it's like, all right, cool. They reduce all their damage by this by this kind of amount. Whereas other classes, um, and I think demon hunters come to mind because I've I've touched on a little on just a little bit of those. Uh, they just reduce. Um, they just reduce armor with their active mitigation but then they have certain cooldowns for their magic reduction and, and that sort of thing so if they're flattening it across the board i see that as mostly a good thing as long as the encounter mechanics and the outgoing damage from dungeon and raid bosses uh matches that or you know it it, it compensates for it and you have uh, access to bfa alpha right Yes, sir. As of like two weeks ago, something Which like that. Which is pretty huge. So have you been playing around with that prop paladin on there? I have, yeah. I've been leveling it a little bit uh, during the streams, and I think he's at uh, 114 now. Like he, he did a couple of right now, 116? Or... I believe it's 116. Oh, oh, oh is it, is that already the... they do I don't it. think it's totally maxed out yet, because otherwise yeah. then they would have a start testing like super end game stuff traveling over to the other zones but i don't think that is entirely in place yet yeah so how does the uh tanking in general feel for the paladin on bfa right now uh so far it's hard to uh it's hard to say because i haven't really gone into dungeons yet i've been mostly mm -hmm. doing like the leveling process and all that i expect it to not feel to be honest i expect it to, to not feel that much different I mean, like the biggest difference uh, i'd say like uh, for a prop pally, uh, specifically, one of the big changes happened with Shield of the Righteous, where instead of um, having to hit a target directly, you can just hit the button and then it will instead, you just hit targets in, targets in front of you. And it's a small AOE cone. In my opinion, it needs to be a little bit bigger, so it's in line with some of the other tanking abilities that do uh, similar stuff. But uh, that part's nice, where... Like, let's say if I'm at range and someone's pelting at me with, like, arrows and 
otherwise inflicting physical damage, I can just immediately pop my shield of the righteous for defensive purposes. Yeah. Um, and of course, if I happen to be taking a bunch of mobs, then if I position myself properly, then I can hit them all at once with my shield of the righteous, which feels cool, but it, it's just weird. I, I still need to get used to it because I'm not, I'm just not used to having to reposition myself just so I can use my shield just for the extra threat or DPS. Yeah. Did, yeah. So before this, what, what was your, would you say your main AOE like threat pickup ability? Like how would you pick up a group bats? Was it consecrated ground? Um, it w well, consecrated ground, I believe that was like a wad sort of, oh. I think that was a wad trade, but, but well, that was the last time I played. Uh, <laughs> Um, I mean, I mean, typically you you do a pull with like let's say uh, your Avenger shield along with along with maybe a taunt or something like that, um, depending on what kind of mobs you're picking up. These days, that that much hasn't changed. It feels like so for that judgment hits really really hard, um, even harder than it feels on live right now. But we'll just need to get a feel for how that's going to go later. But one of the big you know since we're losing our artifact weapons. One of the cool things about the Avenger Shield for a Paladin is it's, I forgot the name of the trait, but it's like you hit something with your shield and then you do a small AOE explosion to targets around, uh, targets that are hit. Um, and, and we're losing that too, along with our legendaries and all that other sort of stuff. So it, it, it feels different. It definitely doesn't feel done yet because it doesn't even look like Protection Paladins have even had a pass yeah, with the rest of talents. That's something to keep in mind, of course, as we say this all the time. But this is obviously alpha stuff. This is also beta mind alpha stuff, most of it, not all of it. But um, I would say prop, uh, most of the tanks in general haven't been super played with yet. So don't, if you look at these numbers, don't be like, oh, God, the class is ruined yet. It's really just an idea of what direction they're going to. And I think maybe what we can see from this shield or the rights or whatever, that maybe this is their way of compensating for not having the AOE ability we're talking about from your artifact. Yeah, yeah. Since we're losing the whole explosive shield mechanic, we're losing Eye of Tear, and we're losing a lot of other stuff that has to do with mostly mitigation, a little bit of healing and, and whatnot. But uh, it, it's not going to be until we get our hands on the whole Azerite traits, you know, the Heart of Azeroth and all that other funness to see just how, how they're going to play out in a, in a real encounter situation, because we haven't really seen that yet. Yeah, and it looks okay. like uh, from live in BFA, the talents are literally the same. Oh, no, actually, there was a huge change, because they, like, shuffled around the order, like, oh my god. So it's like the yeah. talent that was on the left, now it's on the right, and what was on the right, it was on the I was like, what the hell's going on? And then yeah, I how, was that, out. how does that affect you? Because, I mean, I know... A change in, like a small change like that, can be pretty big. Oh, well, or, well, are they, they actually have... not changing tier? Or are they just changing yeah. the order? No, no, they, they just changed like where they are from left to right. Like oh, there, there, there was mind. really I no thought... change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just like different, oh, but, uh, different spots, now, like, yeah. same row. <laughs> yeah, I was a little disappointed at first. I looked, I was like, oh my god, what is this? What's what are these changes? So I'm like looking and studying, and after like five minutes, I was like, well, okay, yeah. fuck, no, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing happened. Are there any other like huge changes or I'm huge? Any other changes really that you want to key in on here for Prod Powder? Um, kind of on top of uh, the high level changes for tanks overall, the self healing has gone down a little bit. Um, well, well, things feel maybe things are going to feel slower for tanks overall, but especially for protection paladins and some of the since some of the uh, cooldown times on the abilities such as Shield of the Righteous as well as our self heal. The whole rider, light of the protector, hand of the protector, whatever that's called, uh, that's gone up by I think five seconds or so each. Wow, that's so, crazy. so that's good. So that's going to do some things. It's going to make us feel. It might make us feel a little bit more dependent on healers. Well, it's it's and and it's going to really do something with uh, with seraphim tanks, which is not something that I do personally, but with seraphim and that's our like big uh, prop paladin DPS sort of. Um, uh, sort of path that we want to work with yeah. with the with the nerf to the cooldown on shield of the righteous that just means it's going to take a, it we have to manage um our seraphim a little bit better which means we're going to be po we're going to be possibly using less of those charges which means we might be taking extra even more damage than before so it, it, it's it's really going to be a big give and take if you want to take seraphim yeah i think um something that's interesting to so like key in on that 
is it seems like they're making a lot of healers like slow across the board. Like I know for um, Holy Priest, for example, they're really slowing down our healing rotation. And I'm wondering if that's sort of something they're moving towards. So it's less of like a spam heal thing where like if you're doing higher level content, like you're always casting heal and maybe something where it's more occasional heals and maybe healers are going to focus on DPS a little bit more. And maybe they're doing that for tanks too, but I'm unsure. So I think they've been, they've, they always say that. They always say, well, we want to yeah. make sure that healers, you know, need to care about mana or we need to make sure that healers aren't stuck uh, spamming just like for example with holy priest they're not just spamming uh uh flash oh, yeah. all the time and and all that and, and then over the course of the expansion it always it they always just kind of fall off on that um because yeah. of gear because of um the scaling progression and, and whatnot so that, that that's really hard to avoid at least yeah. from observations certainly um so there isn't a ton of changes as we said prop pound but is there I guess this sort of opens up the room for what would you like to see? Like, if you could get, if you could put like five changes into BFA for Proud Pounds, what would they be? Five changes? Holy Maybe that's God. a little bit much. <laughs> if I'm overloading here. How about, yeah, like one or two changes? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess at the higher level, because they haven't, uh, at least it doesn't look like, like I said, they haven't done a full pass on the tanks yet. I'd really like to see a lot more differentiation on the themes of what of what the tanks mean or what they bring to the table. So like for a protection paladin, one, one thing that I keep uh, taking a dump on is Retribution Aura because that talent is like dog shit. It's, it's, it, it's, as far as I'm concerned in that particular tier of talents, like there's only two talents and and red or red or just sucks and it still sucks on alpha as as it is right now like i think off the top of my head like any mob that hits me will take like 12 damage 12 wow. damage 12 which damage. is like ooh, which is like ooh, that's fascinating now, now that, doesn't, that, that doesn't mean too much because consecrate hits for like 30 per tick but that's still yeah. a lot better than than retribution aura and overall it's just kind of a useless uh talent anyway even though i tried to make it work uh, during early Legion, as much as my team hated that, but I, you know, I, I would, I would love to see like the theme of tanks, um, th th to see an actual theme for tanks. Like I would love to see um, protection paladins be all about like damage return through a retribution aura, where you, you, you know, you, let's make that baseline, and anybody that takes damage from, um, from mobs on your team, they might take like a little bit of damage or. Maybe if you take a certain amount of damage, it starts building up, and then you charge that into like this big explosion or something. I don't know. I, th I think that'd be cool from a class fantasy standpoint, I guess. Um, <laughs> but I would, I would just like to see a stronger theme among among the tanks, whether it's like damage return or uh, this is the tank that does super strong healing. This is the tank that just barely takes damage, or this is the tank that blocks really well, or something like that. Yeah. Um... So during the dev Q&A, they talked about how they're going to be moving similar talents onto the same tier to make it more of a choice. Are there any talents, talents that you feel will probably be up on that sort of a chopping block in the future, like talents that are in a tier that they don't really belong? Hmm. I would say something, I'd say like maybe in the first tier where you have a choice between um, like Blessed Hammer, Holy Shield, and... I have consecrated hammer, I think is what that thing is called. Um, I, I, I think that that tier has is in an okay spot, at least with regards to like having holy shield up there because it's very different. It's very it's obviously a reactive talent. It makes it so that your single target skill is that, that your single target skill uh, stays a single target skill. But with regards to consecrated hammer and blessed hammer, there's like no question that blessed hammer is just the superior thing to go with so i would like to see maybe on um maybe on that same tier maybe they could possibly change uh one one or more of those talents into something that feels like a more meaningful option but that's just kind of off the, uh, that's just kind of off the top of my head i'm sure you guys sure. might have thought of something uh cool and awesome that's like dps related or something flashy you know yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not 100% sure on this. You know, I've been, something that I should have been thinking about a fair amount about like how it is that they can, because um, they, they said that their goal was to make it so that on a certain, whatever the particular tier is of talents, you're going to have all similar things. So I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, I think that 
personally, in my opinion, uh, the Divine Steed Cavalier ability, that seems in a weird tier of its own. It doesn't really seem to fit either Retribution or, or Blessing of the Spell Word because those both seem to be um, external buffs. Well, this is like a personal speed buff. It just seems rather odd. I don't know how they would, maybe they'd move that into a movement tier of its own, but that's just sort of the type of thing that I, that I was thinking of, you know. Yeah, like like when it comes to when it came to like their answer or their statement regarding uh, talents, like for me it it almost it kind of sailed over my head mostly because I'm just kind of firm on the fact that I don't know like I'm not fond of this whole talent tree selection uh, sort sort of deal. It 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 I don't know it just doesn't feel fun for me. Like it doesn't feel like like these talents and the way that they're set up, it doesn't feel like it gives you a sense of, hey, this is why my character is becoming stronger or becoming or, or progressing in like their path to become like the protection paladin superhero guy girl of Warcraft. It just feels like an arbitrary set of skills and abilities that I just kind of throw on there. That doesn't yeah. necessarily feel like it's building on um, the progression, like I said, the progression and the buildup of the paladin as a character and and as a and as a spec. Yeah, we we talked about um, how the talent tree is only at a hundred, and I guess that's still the same way in BFA, is it not? Yeah, yeah, that's going to be the same. Yeah, and that that doesn't feel very good when you're leveling your character and it's supposed to be getting more powerful, but you're not getting anything in return while leveling. Well, it seems like. Um, it seems like they're going through like this change ever since Legion and ever since the whole level scaling thing, they've really redefined what leveling means in the world of Warcraft, where it's not entirely about your character becoming stronger or your character learning new skills and abilities. They kind of do that with story progression and yeah. gear and, and gear that you get from story progression and, and whatnot. Levels, they seem to be, they seem to still have a place because I've I seen arguments know. about people like not wanting to have them, but I just see levels ha uh, having a place just as a story mechanic where it's like, okay, cool. When you get to a level, like in, like in, in Battle for Azeroth, well, when you get to like 112, then you're going to unlock like this thing with the war campaign, for example. Yeah, they, and then they seem like, so cool. to me, they seem a little bit like a way of putting some barrier entry to some content. And I think that's good levels in general like i i understand why you you think it's why people think it's pointless at least to have them now because when was the last time that you cared about level i mean like everyone's max level who plays the game seriously so it's sort of it's one of, one of those things where like people who don't play the game really don't understand but like level doesn't matter um i think i, I don't have a problem with it personally i i think it can be used interestingly to like time gate stuff but that's about it you know, speaking about like questing and leveling, we have now Rose gonna kill me if I don't say this. Technically, this could be considered spoilers. Yeah, spoiler. Te spoiler alert! Boom, bam, bosh. I don't know why he's so bad. Like, who watches so? Who watches a podcast about BFA news and a little bit of extra? Who doesn't expect some spoilers to come about? I. <laughs> like, I mean, right? you know, I, 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 I think it's better it to be safe than sorry. All right. Sure. And oh my god. We're safe. We put our spoiler alert up so you can't sue us anymore. I'm pretty sure that's how uh, Ro told me it worked. Um, but we got some data mined, or not even data mined actually, now it's probably something we just found it. Um, we got some, what they're called chapters of the war quest dialogue. So this is how the alliance is going to get to Zandalar and how Horde is going to get to Kulturaz. Now, Ro, you were telling me, you were telling me about this. Do you want to explain this to the people at home a little bit, Ro? Yeah, you know, I don't. I'm not too sure what the alliance is doing over here, but they're they're trying to become friends with the blood trolls, which just sounds like a horrible idea. Yeah, that just blood sounds trolls, like a bad play. Like, like blood, blood trolls. trolls. What do you think? What do you think of blood trolls? Hexes. Yeah, you know, um, blood magic, all that crazy crap. Human sacrifice. Yeah. But anyway, but... It, it seems like some captain from the alliance just goes off and by himself and tries to dwarves. befriend these people. Are we talking? Now they said led by dwarves. Do they mean led by dark iron dwarves? We don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, pretty much, I read through this thing, and it seems like this guy just went ahead and did what he was gonna do, and uh, got like converted or some crazy crap, and 
Of course, the yeah. Horde attacked the Alliance. You know what? Fine. You guys said the missionaries to try to convert the bloodthirsty um, human sacrifice or blood trolls. But, you know, we, we're, we're warriors. We fight. Don't you agree, Sol? We got to well, gotta sneak in there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, right? But if I land on shore and I see, like, this village full of, like, you know, these crazy dressed troll people and they got a bunch of like red soup <laughs> just kind of all over the place, cauldrons and like they literally like when you go through this village, like you could literally see like people being tied up and beaten and they right. want to be <laughs> and, and they want to be beaten because they think that makes them stronger or more accepted yeah. in, in, in their little blood trolls. That would give me a pretty bad impression. They'd like, be like, you know, know maybe I don't guys. want to mess with these guys. You know? I don't know. That sounds like a pretty strong ally to me. It's like, oh, yeah. these guys are all about honor and righteousness, right? Yeah, so uh, we'd have a pretty strong ally if we could have them on the Alliance side, but I doubt that's going to happen. Jesus. I don't think it is. I think it's going to be somewhere. Maybe you get them at the beginning, but then they betray the heck out of you. Yeah, but it looks like uh, Sylvanus goes ahead and orders an attack on the Alliance. You know what? So. We did what we had to do. We got in and got out. I mean, oh, the last thing I heard, Teldrassil makes some great kindling. <laughs> oh, yeah. damn. Anyway, the, the other thing we got here is we got ar archaeology relics um, where like both Horde and Alliance are going to be fighting over some, they call them relics and, uh, in Zandalar. So I assume like little, little sparkly things you got to click on. We have some camps here. Yeah, there's, there's a dark, a dark iron camp, camp with a mole machine. You know, maybe that means maybe this is how we're starting to get introduced to the dark iron. That'd be lovely. Actually, you know what? You know, if you want to take a look, if you want to back out of that and look at that picture on the lower left one, yeah, that one right there, take a look at that arcane construct and look how hard he's working. Acting as yeah. shade. <laughs> that's because that's the, this is the Nightborn camp, which is I think it's interesting that the Nightborn, because they're an allied race now. They're continuing past Legion. So I'm hoping that that means we'll see like High Mountain Torin and other things like that become lore characters or be not necessarily lore characters, but like yeah. become NPCs we see more often. That construct is like this is my life now. God. Yeah, I mean it. That's, <laughs> it it's fine. It's a robot that doesn't have emotions, but uh if it did, whew. Do you have the time? And then the Horde are, are invading uh, Druxvar or whatever with goblins under Sylvanas' orders, but that's all, you know, nuances. We don't want to get into that. You know, that, that stuff can be a little bit questionable. I, I honestly, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy that we're going to be, that it's not just that we're going to these zones, but we're going to have quests there that are specific to our faction. I really like the amount of faction specific quests that we're going to be seeing now soul um you made a video a little bit back about how you were planning on like you were kind of thinking about like dual uh faction in next expansion is it stuff yeah. like this that makes you want to do that uh, yes um yeah for, because there's so much separation between uh, the Horde and Alliance quests, uh, quest experience. I mean, it's literally one continent or the other that you're going to be primarily doing your stuff with. Like, I don't imagine myself, you know, it, it's not like going to be in Legion where you would level through all these different zones and all the classes, or I'm sorry, both factions have pretty much the same experience with like a few, just a few small differences here and there with like Stormheim. This is like an entirely separate story experience that's that you're getting here, which which I think is cool. Like even if you only play one side, even if you only play horde, I think it's cool that you know your your initial leveling your initial leveling experience was it's going to take place in one spot, but your in but your end game will open up three new zones. Like just yeah, the back. I think, I think, I think that the moment where as a horde player, I guess as an alliance player too, when you get to step into the faction zone, that's going to be such a cool moment. It's almost like you're starting questing again, except at max level. Now, what I'm wondering is how is this going to affect world quests? Are they going to make a ton of faction specific world quests like for the opposite faction? Or are you going to be seeing world quests that are more analogous to the normal quests in that area? It's going to depend. Like we don't, we have, we can only speculate at this point, but I would say that with regards to anything that happens on the other side, you know, like the opposite factions continent, you're probably going to see more aggressive looking stuff you're gonna see hey maybe we should take this objective or maybe we should yeah uh pound the alliance uh forces over here or steal stuff from them or something like that and i'm just hoping 
home area, it'll be more like a repeat of some of the questing that we had already done. Kind of like how it yeah. was in Legion, right? Yeah, I'm just hoping we don't get like 20 Warden Towers in Druxvar. Like, because the Warden, like, you know what I'm saying. We're like, the Warden Tower, it's such um, a cookie cutter world quest where kill the thing at the top of the tower, kill so many enemies. I don't want to see a bunch of those. They're going to actually put in the work to make the world quest over there. I want them to actually be interesting and not just be Warden Towers. I think they're still going to have, they're still going to have world quests just like, you know, that one, but I'm hoping there's less make it. I think at the beginning of Legion, they said it was going to be a long time before we've seen the same one. But, I mean, we always saw repeated world quests. So I guess we'll yeah, see Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, I'd say that was pretty, from, in hindsight, it was pretty inconsistent. I mean, there were a couple quests that it's like, oh, I haven't seen this one in a long, in a long ass time. Yeah. But, no, there's still world quests I haven't done, which I know is crazy given I'm almost oh at the 5,000 or 10,000 mark. But like, I don't know, there's just ones in like the corner. There's also a few that are locked behind quests that I just didn't do because they weren't required for the achievement. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I would like to. I would. I would love to see just more variety, and I think I'm hoping that with the input that Blizzard got over over the past couple of years during Legion, and and I think that World Quest overall is a successful system. I think it's one of the best things oh, to come yeah. out of this with regards to like repeatable content and reasons to be out and about in the world. But give us more. More is always going to be better, and uh, I don't know what it would take to sacrifice. Um, in order to get more variety in World Quest content, but I, I'd love to see more of it. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's an awesome system um, that managed to survive to this point. I was not expecting it to, just because of the rewards it gives. Um, I'm really happy with how World Quest turned out. Now, I don't know, for me personally, the biggest draw for me for World Quest still are like those big Blood of, Blood of Sargeras World Quests that give a ton, right? And, um, I know a lot of people are probably wondering if Blood of Sargeras or something of that nature, like the Blood of Sargeras Primal Argonite, is going to be continuing into next expansion. And it looks like it will. We have some more uh, BFA information about professions where we're going to be getting, it's called Expulsion. Am I saying that right? Expulsion. Whatever. Some crud you get. It's a BOP crafting thing, which should be analogous to Blood of Sargeras and... Um, Primal Argonite. Are you, are you, were you a fan of Blood of Sargeras, this expansion and so on? Uh, yeah, like for me, um, for me, Blood was hella useful, it's especially when the trader appeared, when you were able to trade that Blood of Sargeras for materials, that was like a big plus, because otherwise it was only being used for Obliterum, which was only for crafters, and, I, and, and well, I have gripes about the Obliterum Forge anyway, but I think that with the Blood of Sargeras having that vendor in, it really helped with regards to um, having, having kind of a steady supply of materials coming in to supplement when the, like the really hardcore herb farmers and ore farmers, when they started to kind of like fall off, that's when Blood of Sargeras really started to step in and, and really shine as a way to kind of balance yeah. the way the economy was. And I'm hoping that we're going to be getting the expulsum vendor or whatever quickly. Because I think I'm never, I've never been a crafting professions guy. My money has always been from gathering professions, be that mining, herbalism, skinning, fishing, whatever. So for me, when, when you could actually remember when they first released the trader for Blood Cigars, I made like a ton of gold because I had like hundreds and hundreds of the stuff. And I just sold it all. I, I, I'm really happy with it overall. Um, I, on top of this, we already we also learned about what, what they're calling as scrappers. And um, what basically this seems to be is like a disenchant, uh, except I'm assuming it's going to be for engineering, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in Warlords of Draenor, there was a, um, a building you could build. And it was an engineering building. And one of the features it does, it allows you to get crates of scrap, and it allowed you to scrap them to get like items or whatever, who cares? So Blizzard has already used the language of scrap to refer to engineering. For that reason, the fact that it's a hammer, I believe that's gonna be an engineering thing. However, I could also see this being a blacksmithing thing. Yeah. But it's basically gonna be a disenchant for um, like armor. So it's basically disenchant for non-disenchanters. For non I'm hoping that this isn't just another blitter on Forge though, cause it could be. I don't know. Actually, that's kind of what I think it, might end up being you think 
well, it, it, it's it's hard to say because they they released this article only like the other day. So I jumped into Alpha and took a look, and I tried to do it myself because they, according to the Whitehead article, they tried to uh, destroy stuff and it wouldn't work. And when I try when I tried to do it myself, it said you cannot obliterate this item. Hmm. Now maybe it's because could it be because it's using the same like how much one call it? like code is as the obliteration yeah yeah moment. yeah so if it's doing if it's using that same sort of framework then okay that's cool but it did but the, the fact that it used the word obliterate that's yeah. what makes me lean towards it possibly being like an obliterum forge sort of thing because yeah because to be honest like like if, if it is if this is directly like an enchanting thing i don't know i i, I, I don't know how i'd feel about that because that takes away a lot of the power from uh, from enchanters themselves, from from a supply standpoint, you're going to find that the, that the the supply of, of enchanting mats is no longer a monopoly for enchanters at all. In fact, you're just going to see pro probably going to see uh, prices go down. Well, uh, doesn't obliterum doesn't obliterum already affect that? Mm, no, not really. Obliterum, you can only do crafted items. So oh, the blacksmith has to create an item and put it in there. Yeah, I I guess we'll see. Uh, it's also interesting the language they use here. It says uh, can break down weapons of armor of good quality or higher. Um, and I'm wondering what good quality is. Probably I'd say probably like blue items and higher. Yeah, that'd be my guess. That makes sense. But it, I wouldn't be surprised to see it being a blacksmithing thing, since. You know, we have the Bloodroom Forge, and they might want to try and continue it. I know they like the the uh, eye level upgrades for people to catch up or what have you. Yeah, yeah we'll see. I would have liked it if, if this is going to be like an obliterum like forge. I would have liked it if they just brought the whole damn thing over because I like the look of that thing. That big, nasty face. With like, ooh, I'm going to get the items and all that. Just and really fits in the whole, would it fit in like a Zandalari home? It'll fit as well as this this electronic, you know, steampunk looking. That's just the auto thing. hammer, yeah. That's what, that's just the auto hammer model. That's the, the fact that it was an auto hammer model is also one of the reasons why I figured that it may be a engineering thing. But again, who knows? We'll figure out when it actually uh, comes to the point. We'll, we'll, we'll check out the next build and find out. Oh, certainly. Um, speaking of changes that sort of took a little bit while for this to really come to fruition we got culture as culture as human druids now when i first put this on the show notes uh it was when it was first dropped like a week ago and it was all speculation um we had some npcs in culture as like a quest line which involved the culture as druid like that's what got the whole ball rolling on this and uh we had some people with data mind what they thought could be a moon conformed cat form um, honestly, the moon can form. I still could see happening. Not the golem, but the wicker man. I yeah, feel like that would make a great right moon can form. Yeah, that one definitely. Scroll down, you can actually get a model viewer version of it. Um, I also think the cat form is possible, but I think they're going to do some work on it. It'd be a weird cat form. I don't know if this guy. You think this guy would be able to be a moonkin? No, no, no. The one under it. Oh, this one right here? Yeah. Can't you see that? Like, they already kind of look casty, so I could see that being like, yeah. What, what about you, Saul? Do you think that the this could be the moon can form? Because at the moment we actually don't have that. Um, for some reason, if you go to custom spell O four, there's a boat rowing animation. <laughs> there you I don't go. know what that's about. Well, obviously, that's how they're going to get around. <laughs> yeah, you know. Boats? Yeah, they, no, they use boats. I'm assuming that they probably use a skeleton from something else. Um, oh, that's cool right there. Huh? Honestly, all these custom spells are pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, if, if so, if you can't see this. There, it looks like he's rolling a boat. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, it got confirmed. Culture, culture and Jews got confirmed. We got a bear form. Now, the bear form is... Like the Zandalari forms, where it's like nothing else we've ever seen before, I guess, if that makes sense. Obviously, it's in this wicker style, which could sort of lean towards us having the wicker uh, 
the Wickerman is like the uh, the Pumpkin form. The only problem with it is that it's not really glowing. So. Yeah, I don't know. I think the uh, Zenwari one's a lot better, but with these I, new allied races, I'd like to see them uh, go like down different paths. Like the Zandalari like turtle, that was really cool. But now it yeah. looks like they're returning to like a, a standard bear form. Like I, don't, I like this so personally. I don't know. Well, Just... as well from my observations, like the the Gamera turtle dino bear looking thing, as as well as probably this wicker bear. I guess I guess wicker bear. That's what I've been. That's what people keep telling me to call it. Okay, like, yeah, I'll call it wicker bear. Um, they they appear to use the same kind of bear model as the other druid yeah. forms. Because like if you if you pull up the turtle, you can have it sit. And it sits just like a druid bear. I predict that this one's going to be animated pretty much the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, obviously they can do different stuff because they have, you know, the werebear. Like, that's completely different from anything else in the game. So. Yeah, they can. And um, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything other big about these guys. I think that, honestly, I'm happy to see that a human type race will be druid. Now, you yeah. can't make culture as humans on the alpha yet, yet, can you? No, not yet. Not yet. Now, see, what I'm wondering is, there's a couple kind of culture as humans. There's the real big boys, then there's like the medium big boys, and then there's like the skinny boys. What culture as humans are we going to be able to make? And are we going to be able to make different weight types? Oh, I'm going to make like, a big boy for sure. Well, yeah, probably if I'm a bear. But can, am I just going to be allowed to make a big boy, or can I make like a medium boy or like a small boy? Because it, it seems like when you look at the pictures of like Boralus and stuff, you got a, little, a bunch of different size types. What would you like to see, Saul? Would you like them to see weight variations on it, or would you just want them to have one type of it? I would love to see weight variations, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm trying to recall off memory, because I don't think I can load it up from this computer, but in the when you look at the model viewer, you, you see some model types, but you see not all of them that are yeah. available. You definitely see the, the big guys, like the, those big, huge naked Yeah, that seems guys. to be like this the spearhead of all this stuff whenever you whenever they'll talk about it or whatever they they show the big boys yeah yeah and and, and i like the defining look of them the because otherwise otherwise they look a little bit too familiar but it, it's it's going to be about how they how they write this story ultimately because they might because because like those big guys that might be a certain family or a certain uh you know he the, the cultural cool humans from certain parts of the continents yeah, that like don't necessarily associate. Humans, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so they might not. So those particular humans might not be like the dru like druids necessarily. So you, we might not be able to interchange um, the druid class with either of those types yeah. of humans, assuming that they're going to bring all those types of humans in anyway. Yeah. Now, the talking about druids here. Um, last week we sort of showed every. Maybe it was the week before that. Last week or the week before that, we showed everyone the cat forms for Zandalari trolls. And um, I personally like them. I know Ro doesn't. Now, what I said last week was, let's look at the animations when they come out. Because even if they do use stock cat animations, actually putting it on the body can really help make it live. So, Ro, with the animations, what do you think? Have they grown on you at all? Uh, I don't know. I think they still kind of look just really weird as a druid form in general. So you don't but, really know what the hell it is. It's the animation is like, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, what, what did I call it? Stegosaurus? Something like that. But with the animation, doesn't it? I feel like when you just see it crouch like that, it really makes it seem at least less weird to me. Because when it's in that sort of T form or whatever, where it's like standing up wicked straight, that looks weird. Of course. Yeah, that'll look goofy. I mean, at this point now, it's, pretty clearly using the cat type of animation yeah. yeah it's a cat it's a it's a raptor it's a craptor whatever you want to call it yeah i don't, I don't know. know i don't know i think the animations either. make it for me though personally i think i have to see it in action i'm uh you already are looking at it in action right now look at that <laughs> it's moving what more do you want from it ro I don't why know. won't I'm you just... love it I'm just not convinced that this is the best they could have done. I think the the you know the druid form for the turtle and the moonkin and all that were way better than what they came up for the. Yeah, cat. and 
Am I the only one to do, do you guys think I'm right in in this assessment that it's one of the most controversial of the druid skins that have come out for the Allied races? Because I've heard, like you said, it's a raptor. A lot of people have been shitting on it. Um, oh, I'll just call it a raptor because it's a cat and a raptor. I, I like it. Oh, sure. I like it a lot. Um, but as for like, I'm a fan. yeah, but as for controversy, I don't see much controversy here. It's it's a it's a cat type. It's obviously mm-hmm. like a, it has this that dinosaur take on it. But I would say, I'd I'd actually say that the wicker bear is a bit more controversial for me at least with regards to just the theme of like this animated tree looking thing. Really? We, look, well, I'm I'm pulling it out of my ass here, but I would just wonder like what would what would Malfurion Stormrage think of something like this? Well, that that is something interesting. Now you bring it up, like from a lore perspective, and of course, you know. I'm a, I'm not a total lore freak, so I don't know everything, everything. But like, from a lore perspective, these wicker animals are witch based. They're from witches. Yeah. How do we? How does that vibe with druids who are nature based? And I I don't know, but I assume witches and druids are sort of diametrically opposed, right? I feel like there's some lore questions that need to be answered, and we haven't really gotten anything to that fact yet. Maybe when we get the quest line with the bear, when you actually have to play through the quest line with the bear form, uh, and like gaining these guys, maybe that witch thing will be explained so that witches aren't don't seem as bad. But um, at the moment, witches are kind of gross. I don't uh-huh. know. There's uh, like the worgen. The worgen are another druid form that was uh, like Malfurion decided to to like banish or whatever. So I mean, obviously in the war they have different forms. Yeah. So I'm I'm I think with the alliance or with the uh, allied races they could expand on that instead of making something that looks similar like a wicker bear. You can make like a wicker golem or a wicker whatever. Yeah, that's what I was kind of hoping for. Or something like that. Um, before we had got this release, I was hoping that the wicker golem that they were showing was going to be the tank form, and everyone was like, "No, Dab, it's not going to happen." And and look what look what happens, and not it. So, <laughs> you know, Ro, what is my favorite thing in the world? Transmog. Of course, of course, you you got it right. And do you know what we just got some of? And you know, actually, this is just quick, quick information for the viewers at home. Um, I'm a I'm a, a priest now, and I'm a very happy cloth transmog and priest now. Um, so. Whenever I get cloth transmogs, love them. And we just got a huge swash, a swash of them. They seem to be dungeon sets. And I'm really liking what we got here. They got sort of a like a Lovecraftian Cthulhu vibe to them. What do you think about these, Soul? You know, this is actually my first time looking at them at all. And very first impression is I like the hat. I really, yeah, I really like that hat. No, it's the best part I of like that. The hat with the the tentacles coming out of the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has the you know, like you were saying, the love tracking sort of thing, like a Bioshock sort of thing, and uh, yeah, I, I I like. I'm not. I don't know about the color, but like, okay, okay, yeah. So, so well, there's color colors. variations and all that. Yeah. But I like that so far. I like it. Um, uh, I, the only thing that I'm not as fond of is like the whole continuation of robes. Like robes, really? to me are robes to me are played out. I love robes. I only like, transmog robes for my uh, cloth users. I would love to just see a, a little bit more variation when it comes to like how they want to shape that. Like, like well, the problem is kind of a they don't know how to make pants. <laughs> yeah, for, no, they uh, don't. Like, it's, like for cloth pants, they always just look stupid. I agree. Though, so, and sometimes actually you do see it. So for a set like this, sometimes you'll see it where like. You'll get a split set, and you'll have the, just the chest part and the pants for it, and you know. But I don't know if this is going to be one of those cases. Obviously, we don't have it at the moment to see. I like it because I really like the goggles and the fact that it's fully skin covering. Like I could see, despite that's a little bit crazy, like I could see someone on a ship using this. Yeah, I like this set too. It's really yeah, really cool looking. And, and they talked like about the shoulders with the with the tentacles. tentacles. Thing, yeah, yeah, they had talked about during the. Dev, not the Dev Q and A during the B during the Blizzard BFA announcement art panel. It's a little bit of a reach, but I remember they had talked about how for Boralis um, and the the sort of culture as in general, like the whole sea theme, and a, and a lot of they talked a lot about how like squids and and sea creatures are going to sort of 
see their way into armor types. And I'm wondering sort of what else can we expect? Maybe we have a shark plate set. I think that'd be cool with like shark helm or whatever. I'm just spitballing there, Corey. Or something or like, like shark shoulders or like... Yeah, right? Like you ever play carved Overwatch, in the wood, but still. Yeah, if you ever play Overwatch, like Roadhog has like a shark helmet he can wear, so maybe something like that. Yeah. So like what, I guess what other sea-based creatures would, I, would you guys like to see as, as, uh, as transmog inspiration? I want to hold on to a giant crab as a shield. That'd be nice, a giant yeah. crab shield. Um, maybe something to do with like a whale. Yeah, a whale. I like that too. I'm trying to think of a good one. Sea cucumber. Could I? Could I just have a sea cucumber outfit? It's just a cylindric, one one cylinder covers really? my entire body. Goldfish. How about that? Huh? Goldfish. I, I think it's interesting. Um, other than that, we also got some pirate hats. Now, story time here. Not really a story time. It's very short. Um, I spent 20k, like four days before this was announced, on a pirate hat. It looks a lot like the second one. I'm a little bit mad. Can you guys tell them I'm a little bit mad? Yeah, a little bit. Wait, how much did you spend on that? 20K? Yeah. Like, it could be worse, right, of course. Yeah. Well, for me, I'm like, eh. Like, I've, I've, spent, I've spent 50K on a hat before, but that hat wasn't reproduced or wasn't confirmed to happen in BFA like two days later in a way better form. But I think this is awesome. A ton of my buddies in my guild do a pirate transmog thing, so I'm thinking like, you know, we're gonna up the game a little bit for pirate transmogs. Yeah, and, and expansion. If for some awesome. reason you don't like the helm, even though I think the helm is the best part of the set, I think that there's color schemes in this to satisfy the previous set with this as a helm. Yeah, something like this green right here to go with one of those other sets, something like that. We also got a uh, a shirt here, a new shirt. Like anyone wears shirts. Oh, well, that's why I wear a shirt. But like, like anyone cares about shirts. Um, it's called the lumberjack shirt. Uh, it's basically a giant circular saw, and we can assume uh, that it will be. This could just be an NPC item for the logging camps to tear guard sound. Yet we might be able to get it through some faction questing. I assume. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not real big fan of shirts. The only, only shirts I I'm like only... that give you buffs. That's the ones I like to wear. I'm only yeah, kind like, of weirded out by him, like showing that midriff right there. I can't stop yeah. looking at it. It's you know, it's <laughs> it draws the eye a little bit. And that you're right. That actually is kind of interesting. Um, I'd assume that that's not supposed to be like that, but you never know. Another possible yeah. slut mug, something for another slut mug. Here. <laughs> that would be a pretty shitty slut mug. Uh, I mean, you don't know how it looks like on a female character. Yeah, on a female character, it's just uh, pasties. It's just <laughs> circular saw pasties. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, maybe. Who knows? We, we haven't got it confirmed or denied yet. Um, speaking about speculation here, we got some speculation from what may be the Valpyrian race mount. That's what people are saying, or what this one side's saying. I can see it. These are buzzards. Um, they're already going to be confirmed to be in the whole uh, deserty area that the Volpirin inhabit, right? Um, what do you think? Do you, uh, so do you think these are going to be the Volpirin race mounts? Let, let's go into the assumption that Volpirins are an allied race. Do you think these will be the Volpirin race mounts? I don't see why not. Um, but I don't know the story behind them at all. Like we haven't, we haven't unlocked the zone where you first see the Volpira over in Voldoon. That's on that's on Zandalar, that's on the Horde side. So yeah. we haven't really seen the narrative written. But I have yeah, I've I've seen other races or you know, I've been encountering stuff in the Alpha where you'll see um NPCs or mobs that are mounted on something. So um I mean maybe these could be the the race that that they will appear like right on or it could just be ones that we fight or you know these could be uh, NPCs that we fight but then the actual race mounts will be something entirely different. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Well, these are, these are buzzards, right? And um, the, they, I think that these were also, they, they'd redone the buzzards in um, fucking, where's the, what, you, you should know this, Rose. it's one of the Alliance zones. Was it Westfall? Are there buzzards in Westfall? Uh, yeah, yeah, there is. Well, they've redone the buzzards in Westfall. And I guess that's probably why they're, they, this, this is the thing. But I don't know. I'm kind of interested. Again, 
uh, like Sol was saying, could be could be anything else, literally, because this is obviously full speculation here. They don't this even might know be, what's this might be the uh, might be the last boss in the game, for all we know. This might be yeah, a, it could yeah. be. It could it could be Buzzard Bill, the final boss. Well, I think there's uh, uh, there's confirmed. that one boss that does ride around on a um, buzzard. Oh yeah, the in Freehold. Yeah, he rides around on a parrot. Uh, I mean, a it, it could possibly be a mount that uh, you ride around on. Buzzards and parrots are different, and I think they actually may have confirmed that as a mount. I don't remember. Um, speaking about Volpirin, though, and I'm just going to say this once again. Volpirin have not been confirmed. And I'm surprised that no one asked the question at the Q&A, which makes me think that a bunch of people did, but they didn't want to answer it, right? Yeah. Volpirin's not confirmed. They're not, I guess what you want to call it, they haven't been denied. No one's been like, no, we're not having Volpirin. So could happen. We don't know. I'll put it to you that way. But we have some stuff that is interesting to me. We have some animations. We've got a sleep animation. They sleep like a cat. Surprising. <laughs> I'm waiting for the dance. As soon as I see the dance, then, then I'll, yeah. I'll be like, all right, I'm pretty sure now. And they have a couple animations um, that we, don't have, can, we haven't seen yet, but we can inference may or may not really sort of help us clarify these are going to be uh, allied rates here. We have a sleep up which is, I guess, getting it from sleep. Makes sense here to see that. We have the stealth walk, which could be used um, as an NPC, but it could also be a rogue thing. Here's the one, the one that's really selling it for me. Emote train. If you guys don't know the, the train emote, yeah. woo, woo, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the fact that they have a train emote to me, like, why? Then they have jump in, use standing, and ready FL. Um, which all could be NPC things, but the, doesn't the train mode sort of stand out to you as weird? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess they'll probably end up being an allied race. You say that with such contempt, bro. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of these things. What about you, Sol? You found the? I'm a, honestly, I really like the uh, Volpirin. I'm pretty indifferent about it. Like, I'm pretty. I'm pretty racist when it when it comes to uh, my preference. I mean, I like being, I like I like, I like being a blood elf. That's okay. I, like I like being a blood elf, and so you know, there's at least as of right now, there's no other class that can be. Or, I'm sorry, there aren't any other races that I care about that can be a paladin yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm 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 happy I'm happy for people that want to play as a as a Volpira. Straight up, like yeah, I, I don't. I, I have nothing bad to say about about them as a race. It's just not for me. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna be able to be paladins. I just want to just want to make that clear. If I had to guess, I'd say rogues, hunters, probably priests, um, warriors, what else? Prob warriors, probably warriors. Yeah, I I'd want to say druid, but I don't think they want to put the work in to set up another druid form. Um, that's really about it. Maybe monks, of course. Monks are easy to throw in there, I think. I mean, I think there, the, there, there, there are a lot of classes that are like easy to be like, oh yeah, of course, yeah, anyone can be a warrior or a hunter. Yeah, or, exactly. Or yeah, maybe like a, a mage. Maybe a mage. Yeah, yeah, yeah mage. Yeah, maybe a mage. I just don't think they're going to be paladins, which usually are they're pretty careful that they give paladins to. I think it's not going to be able to be like a druid or a shaman. Anything they have to do extra work for. I think we'll just see. Uh, on top of this, we also got fur markings and tattoos. Um, and I think these are interesting. Some of these just seem like natural fur markings. Most of them do. However, some I guess are more tattoos. And you have these on both both here and male and female. Again, this could just be something to do for NPCs. But it's interesting to see. I mean, we've talked about how it seems like a lot of the allied race that people are talking about are having mark fur markings or tattoos. You know? And to get on something that's a little bit more confirmed here, right? The Dark Iron Dwarves, who are a confirmed race, of course, they were announced, have tattoos. And they're not just any tattoos. Have you seen these soul, the Dark Iron Dwarf tattoos? I've seen them and I'm jealous because yeah, they got some you know, crazy I, I, stuff. I think, uh, right? Yeah, yeah they, have, they have some cool looking stuff. And I, I know that during that QA, that Blizzard was like, okay, yeah, we want to do some more customizations, but. 
some of it's hard and sometimes it's hard to go back and revisit and redo some of the old races to add these sorts of things in. But I would say that, hey, you know what? Some of us might want like these sorts tattoos. of like, tattoos. Yeah, tattoos doesn't sound all that difficult. Hard, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, you just draw on the character, you know, get out your pencil or whatever. Yeah. I think I see right on your monitor. I've yeah right. I've in the past said that I think that they're going to have tattoos for all races at some point, and seeing on the seeing it come as what seems like a baked in feature for the majority of allied races, I've said this in the past, is almost like an indicator to me. Now these are not just any tattoos, just some like prison hard tattoos. <laughs> yeah. You got like a Mad Max thing going they, on. These doors like, have done their time. Over the head. Yeah, this is like you got face tattoos. What I'm wondering is, are we going to be seeing normal tattoos? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, like, like I what are mind normal seeing, tattoos? I, well, well, you know, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't mind seeing something like goofy and silly, like, okay, okay, Blood O's, let's go ahead and start dipping into this. So we get, like, I don't know, a little flower. Butterfly. Yeah, like a little yeah, flower yeah. on the ankle or something. Oh, get, no, get a tr- <laughs> have, a, have a Blood Elf tramp stamp tattoo. Or you have, like, yeah. a little, or like a little teardrop <laughs> right on the side of the face. Yeah, right. I think honestly, I think it'd be a great area to like just expand customization because here, I've how many have, have you guys ever done this where you see somebody maybe not on the same transmog but have with the exact same character as you, customization you wise. Like, like a like I had a, or... there's like two there's like two or three people in my guild who have the exact same looking blood elf female, like um... transmog too. No, not even not transfer, but like looks, just like customization. Oh, okay. Yo, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen a number of them. Right? But I mean, it's yeah, like, that's what transmod's for, and no one looks as good as me in transmod. So um <laughs> okay, so I think you need to step down. Uh you get a little bit crazy here. Uh, we don't want to have to cut you from the show, but you're just wrong. Uh so you should know. Anyway, what I'm saying is that it's so easy to make the exact same character as somebody else. So the more customization options we get, the better. You know? Yeah. Because you think the way the math works, when you add a factor like a straightened back for an orc, that doesn't just add two, it doesn't just add like one more type of character to mix. It basically multiplies everything by two. Because you can now, you can have whatever character you've had two, in two different ways. Like when you, even the little things like tattoos, if you had 10 tattoos, it drastically increases the number of possible character combinations. Yeah, this. I mean, them doing all this for the ally races opens up possible, like down the, down the road, you know, add more stuff to the original yeah, characters. Know. And be, I'm sure your bar, your barber probably moonlights the tattoo artist. Like, what's oh, the worst? Oh yeah, of that? course. You know, yeah, that guy is talented. He's a chiropractor yeah, right? he, as well for the. Orbs, yeah, so. you know, he's been working on it for a little bit. You know, I I trust him completely to straighten out my back. You yeah, know. maybe or, you know, maybe when the cult Tyrans are around, he'll. Be able to take some fat off or add some. Do a quick want, lipo. You know, hit the gym real quick, or you know. Yeah, no, I think I don't know. I think tattoos would be really cool, um, especially like maybe. And this this is obviously a long shot here, but we aren't going to be seeing. I assume we don't know, but I can assume that we're not going to be seeing um, artifact appearances for our necklace, right? You can assume that. That seems pretty safe to assume. Yeah, I had but what? Something. I we had, I tried, had two I tried to control appearances so from our necklace, right? We're like, you unlocked, your necklace now gives you sick, sick-ass sick glowing tattoos. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I'm that, sure the, the, the Heart of Azerite, or whatever it's called, isn't going to be just looking the same throughout the entire expansion. Yeah, I don't know. I, if you guys don't know, it's looking like the Heart of Azerite is going to be a, a visible necklace. Which they've only done one at a time in the game. And I'm hoping it's small, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I haven't <laughs> seen it. Be really? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Ro, can you pull it up real quick? Yeah, yeah, can you pull that up? Because I, I haven't seen it. I even tried control clicking it, and I didn't notice it. Yeah, well, we, we, we talked about it last show, but um, basically it's like it's a physical necklace. You probably didn't see it because it was in like a WoW head article about weapons. Well, if you can't find it there, it's actually in the YouTube thumbnail that we released. It's on our characters in the YouTube thumbnail. Right, I want to pull up the alpha and then let's see if I can get this to run and take a look. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't even know if it's gonna be a physical character, right? Um, but like anyway, with we're getting a little bit off track here. But I no, this is I, important. I'd this hope is what we're that, talking about. Of yeah, course, man. but I'd hope that they'd have some customization to it, right? You'd hope. Uh, maybe. I mean, uh, then having a transbog neck, it doesn't sound very prominent. I, I think I would like to. Um, yeah, I, it doesn't sound like a super prominent thing that I care to show off. I'm not a Bro. big necklace person. Unless, Bro, unless they can do like a big old bling thing. Work, do you? Uh, it's right you, here. I mean, you can control barely zoom. see it, though. Control zoom. So we got a little bit of technical difficulties because Rose is a little bit of a dumbass. Damn. I don't even know it's what the zoom bit. button is. Just see, I control see and scroll your mouse, bro. EDs help sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what am I doing here? Press control and then roll your, and do the mouse wheel. Do you not know how to zoom in on a page? There you go. You see it? You see the little blue necklaces that we got there? No, up, scroll up, down, there you go. You see them on our characters? That's what it looks like. That's uh, it. Art is rendering. Thanks. I don't know if it's gonna be that big, but I don't think it will be either. But um, yeah, that's some flavor, flavor looking shit right there. Yeah, we were talking about that. We were talking maybe, maybe you can unlock an appearance for it where it's just a clock. I would, yeah. I would much rather have a big ass clock. Yes. And the clock shows your current, uh, like Azerite power uh, to the next level. You know. Okay, that's kind of hokey. I'll take the clock or or a toaster. You know what? I overdo it. Um, you got to make sure to get like the gold ropes around it too. You know. Okay. Or maybe like we a little bit. Look it up track here. We were talking about Vulpirans earlier. No, we we're talking about um, Transmog. This is important. We <laughs> were. It's important, but we we were talking about Vulpirans and Vulpirans have been confirmed. But there's a little bit that makes me think they're going to get confirmed because if you look at some data mine stuff that we've gotten re recently. Um, so not only do we mention some mounts, but we also mention Valpirin. Uh, I'm just opening it up here. Uh, so for Valpirin, it's like we get like Valpirin mining animation or whatever, right? Which or it says cosmetic Valpirin mining. Now, and it's also a channel. So what I would assume would be that this is what your mining animation is. Now, of course, it could just be that they want a Vulpirin mining in, like, the background or whatever. But I'm hoping that it's not that, you know? Uh, also on this page, we also get a couple of mount names here. We have the Dark Forge Ram, which, obviously, Dark Iron Dwarves. It's nice to be in a ram. Then we have something weird here. We have the Dawn Forge Ram and the Vicious War Club. Now... I've been thinking about this all week, or not all week, all, ever since this uh, article was uploaded. And I'm now thinking that maybe the Dawn Forge Ram is, because they've confirmed Dark Ground Paladins, maybe it's the Paladin mount for Dark yeah. Ground Forge. I think uh, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, and it obviously it actually has a Paladin symbol too. So that's that mystery solved. But I think it's interesting that we have that confirmed in that way. Also, we have the w Vicious War Clefhoth, and if you don't know the Vicious War, those are like the gladiator mounts, right? Um, so that's pretty cool that we have. Uh, it can be a cleft hoof. And if you guys don't know what a cleft hoof is, it's like, I'm trying to think. They're the weird ones. They're the, are they the, the big cold water Yeah, they're ones? the big dudes with the huge tusks in the front. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the big dudes, huge tusks on the front. They're, they almost look like a mountain with tusks. Yeah, pretty right? much. It's about yeah. accurate. Yeah, uh, we actually got a cuff of mount in Draenor. If you did shit, who cares? Um, I think a rare spot dropped one as well. Something like that. But anyway, next next expansion, we're going to be getting a Vicious War Cleft Hoof. I think it's kind of interesting that what are Clefts of even native to? Because didn't we, I'm trying to think, do we have Cleft Hoofs in... I think they're um, in a Grand, maybe? In, yeah, 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 I think so. Grand, is that what it is? I thought we also might have had some in Northrend, or am I just completely off base? Like in Boron Thunder, I would have. Uh, those were Kodos. The Mammoths. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, Kodos and Mammoths and stuff. Yeah. I think the Clef of, yeah, is from the Outland, the Grand Area. I was kind of interested, like, they were, are they bringing it back? What, what, it's kind of an interesting pull, right? Well, it's just, I mean, it's a PvP mount, so. Yeah. Well, listen to me here. 
what else is an outland that and uh, even in the grand i think about it I'm pretty sure yeah what's what else is an outland that's confirmed for bfa uh, i don't know what is it it's um, not a multiple choice do you, do you know soul really the uh, the, the fabulous soul can't even catch this what about the magar orcs oh uh, you're the talking about journal well, no, but no, but aren't the Magar Orcs also in the Outland? Um, because I mean, Outland is future Draenor. Aren't they there? Yeah, what... but yeah, but no. And I mean, at least we're, if we're talking about like the allied race portion of it, like they've been pretty explicit at this point when they're talking about Magar Orcs, they're talking about ones from alternate yeah. Draenor. Yeah. Well, see, but that, that makes me wonder then why, why Clefthos? Because at first I was like, Oh, it's because of the allied race. Um, it's because of the orc allied race. It might still be, now that I think about it, because well, were Clefsos in, in Warlords of Draenor? I feel like they were, but I don't really remember. Uh, yeah, they were. Okay, well, then it could still be that. I'm just thinking it's going to have some ties to the allied race of the orcs. I'm 100% convinced that that's going to be a PvP rewarded mount. Just because it's a clef. Was that was that an argument? I mean, I think everyone knew it was I mean, war mount. If you go and look at the vendors, you know, for the PvP mounts, they're all called vicious, whatever. We know. I didn't know that that was a question, Ro. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation, though, Ro. Ro confirms. So I'm just saying that this, you're you're reading into this vicious war clef of too much. It's well, not. You know. It's not going to be ah. tied to an allied race. Okay, fine. If you if you believe that, Ro, if you I believe mean, that. Here. <laughs> All right, so I have three PVP mounts, and they're all vi vicious Gilnean warhorse, vicious war steed, and vicious war saber. It's, I mean, they're they're literally tied to rewards. Okay. That's all I'm saying. You're just reading way too into this, Dev. No, I, I, I gotta gotta dive deep. Gotta figure out those little speculations. You never know, because you know maybe that's maybe that's the next big question. You never know. <laughs> now, right. talking about reading too far into things. Are you guys ready to read too far into some some models from BFA? Let's do it. Let's open that up there. A few we got a few things. We got some weapon models which I think we've seen before. Have we? We probably reviewed them on the show, but for sake's sake, let's review them again. But let's first talk about this armored construct. You know, this captured Titan construct. First off, Titans in the name. Yeah. So this is most likely going to be from the Nazmir raid, um, which has been confirmed to be a Titan prison. I could see this being a boss, right? Or it could just be a big piece of ad. Or I, yeah, it actually might be like a guard, like two guards before the boss room or something like that. You have to yeah, fight. I can see that. yeah, it could be boss ads, or it could be a boss itself. Well, hey, it looks like, hella cool. Yeah, I like the way it looks. Or it's another allied race. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, you never know. You never know. I think that these are awesome. Honestly, they're, I think they're very cool. Um, one of the reasons why I think that this may be a boss is if you look at the death animation, it's very involved. Which I know is a, a weird way of doing it. But, like, usually that can usually tell you that it's a boss. Well, let's see if we can uh, get it here. Look at the death. There you go. It's very, doesn't that look wicked? It's like, it's, it's almost comical. It, like, it thinks it's down, but it's not. Damn. It's taking a while then, to then go falls there. And, right. Doesn't that seem like a boss death animation? It also falls. Yeah. Look at that. I wonder if it'll be like a boss that has like half his body cut off. Because he like sinks down. See what it looks like. Yeah. It also has a swimming animation. Or it's oh, it called flying. Down. Flowing? Flying. Uh, where is it? Near the bottom. Anyway, I think honestly, this definitely seems like a boss to me. I I would not be surprised if it was. No, like I'm I'm sold right on it being a boss. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be a boss. Uh, something like Kolargarn and Oldwar. He comes out of the you know wherever the hell he was staying in. Yeah. Um, obviously he also has a really sick weapon. 
I'm hoping this might be a weapon appearance we can get, kind of like we got with um, a couple boss in Legion who dropped their own appearance as a weapon, like um, Argus the Unmaker, uh, Maiden, or whatever. Then we're going to see more Glaives, and it was confirmed during the dev Q&A, not the time we a question about it, and we had sort of mentioned it last time, that Glaives are going to be confirmed to be a continuing factor. I think that's awesome, personally. Yeah. You know, I, I think I really like Glaives, and I'm happy they're going to continue with them as, like, an item type. Yeah, I'm, really, some... I'm really happy with those, because, you know, it was it De or Demon Hunters, Death Knights, Rogues, and Warriors. I think they can all have Glaives, so... It's just yeah. not going to be a demon hunter thing. It's going to be for more people. Yeah, definitely interesting. Also, these glaives, cool. these glaives still kind of have a demon hunter feel to them. Maybe that's just because they're glaives. Yeah, like but this like, one with the eyes. Yeah. You got a couple different color variants. It has a demon hunter rune on it. Other things we have, it's titled Nazmir Gun, so we can assume it's going to be a raid reward. Well, honestly, one of the cooler gun models in the game, in my opinion. What do you think about this one, Sol? You know, I want to like it, but I am, like, I, I still have an absolute favorite gun. Because I'm a gun person in, in WoW. Like, if, if, like, as a hunter, I know that there are some people who are like, oh, I'm all about bows. I'm all about mm -hmm. guns. I'm a gun person. But my Understand. absolute favorite is still the Wolf Slayer sniper rifle from Karazhan. Like, because it just yeah. looks like a straight-up rifle. I mean, these, these look cool. But, I don't know, they're, they're, they're kind they're of... Not realism. Yeah, they're, well, they're just kind of hokey looking because they're like so over the top, which is which is cool into itself. But when it comes down to it, when it comes to my little transmog fantasy sort of deal, I, I'd rather have like the long looking rifle. No, I respect that. I mean, for me personally, transmog wise, I've always been like, not realism because it's World of Warcraft, let's be honest here, but like more real. Like there's this really awesome gun I have. I don't even know where it's from. Because I played Hunter forever ago, and um, I logged into my old Hunter character when they had redone the transmog system, right? Where, like, any quest you had done or whatever, you know how it worked. Anyway, I had, it was like the Dark Iron Rifle or something like this, and it just looked so sick. It was engraved and stuff. I don't know if you know the gun I'm talking about. Yeah, but anyway. It's ring bell. It, it, oh, I, I get what you're saying. It is very gaudy, very over the top. It reminds me a lot of the... I think it's BM, their artifact weapon. If that makes any sense. Oh, their uh, their hidden appearance rifle thing. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember I... that either. I immediately changed really? it to the Wolf Slayer rifle, like the moment <laughs> I got it. I was like, "Cool, I got a new gun." <laughs> right. That's like that's like if you have the Ashbringer, but you have it set to some green sword because yeah. because it looks. Awesomer or a broom yeah. or a shovel. Yeah, there you go. I, shovel. You know who won the trial style when I was playing it once? A guy with a shovel tabard on, like the dual shovel or tabard, dual wielding glowing shovels. Nothing else. Did you vote for him? I okay, I may have voted for him because I thought he was gonna lose. Womp womp. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is. Anyway, I think these guns are really cool. Um yeah. obviously Titan Force really again. Cool. Which confirms we already knew about the Nazmir raid, of course. I'm excited for the more glaives because Death Knights have a severe lack of uh, weapons to put on their backs, so this will be awesome yeah. to transmog into. I would like to see, like, I'd like to see, like, instead of this whole dual bladed, you know, obvious glaive thing. I, uh, if you guys recall, the War Blades of the Aldrachi, I believe that's the. Uh, uh the vengeance demon hunter tanking weapon mm -hmm. how how oh, had, yeah 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 that has a different look to it and i like those i want to see uh, a couple more which one of those like do you do you like vaguely describe it i'm trying to get an image in my head are those the half arm ones yeah uh, yeah almost like a baton i agree yeah, with you yeah. there was yeah. actually it, it was a fist like weapon or whatever it is yeah there was a fist weapon in wad that was like that um, and fist weapons, we, we don't see any in this, but we in a lot of other data mine stuff, fist weapons seem like they're going to be a very big deal, this expansion. Like, they've kind of, every now and then, they, they've happened, you know, since since monks were a thing, they've sort of tried to include them, but they've always been a little bit neglected. But I think we, as far as questing, we've seen a fair few of them. For better or for worse, I do play a fair bit of monk. Um, sort of talking about, I guess, stuff that, that's still developing here. We, 
a while ago. Was it last week or the week before bro, where we talked about Barrales? Uh, I believe it was last week, wasn't it? It might have been last week. Who cares? You can watch the episode on YouTube. Plug. Anyway, when we were talking about Barrales, we, I had brought up the point that compared to Zandalar, it seemed much more empty. If that meant, did, did you see the older pictures of Barrales, Saul? Um, I, I I went around and yeah, it it's just kind of it was really bare bones, but that was like when I first jumped into the yeah. game, it was like two weeks ago. Exactly, which is probably around when we were talking about it. Um, but now, now it appears as though they've really livened it up. They've added some quests to it, which I think is awesome. I always love quests in capital cities. Um, but they've textured a couple of boats, which is great, you know, of course we're gonna do that. But apparently they've also added a ton of NPCs from the screenshots we see here. Way, way more lively. Yeah, bro. You've been trying to incriminate me and say that I think Boralus is better than Zandalar or whatever. You, you tried that in the past. Doesn't work. I still think the Zandalari zone's better. I mean, Zandalari um, capacity's better. But Boralus is it's getting up there, honestly. And, you know, Stormwind, yeah, does look pretty good. Honestly, Stormwind has been my favorite city. It always has been. You know, even as a Horde player, I know it's a little bit treasonous, and they might hang me in BFA for it. But like Stormwind, the whole alliance architecture—the it's what I imagine a fantasy area to look like, you know. And I feel like you're with Boralus, you're kind of getting that. Yeah, that sort of same Stormwind vibe. I think Boralus almost looks better than Stormwind myself. I could see that. I mean, there's definitely much more of an emphasis on the bay. What about you? Do you like Boralus? How it's sort of shaping up? Um, I would say that, like from from what I've seen, I would put Boralus up there with um, Suramar City in mm-hmm. terms of the ambiance and like the overall look and feel of trying to capture a city. Like this, this really gets it. This is like one of the yeah. best looking things that I've seen, and and I'm jealous. I l- really like the theme and the feel of Zandalar and, or I'm sorry, of Zuldazar and like the whole big city because like, like screenshots won't, won't really capture this feeling. Like for folks who Yo, haven't been in here, like it's these, these cities and these, uh, th- these areas are huge. They, they feel yeah. really, really big. Um, but Boralus just looks really, it looks really good. It feels really good. Like, um, and these screenshots don't really show it. But there is an area that's kind of closer to the water, and it's all separated by just wooden docks and planks and stuff that give a really like, it's kind of, it, I don't know what it's supposed to be. It's kind of like the ghetto where you, where you yeah. see like a bunch of market looking kind of places, or you see a bunch of looking, a uh, bunch of torn down looking stuff, but it, but it still is just crafted really well. It really has the feel of this handcrafted city, whereas at least with Zuldazar, maybe it's maybe it's because Zuldazar isn't finished either. But there's just a lot more. There's just a lot more little doodads that give character and flavor to. The yeah, let's see something that you again you can't really see in these screenshots, and I mean, me and Ro haven't really seen too much of because we're not in the alpha. But um, the technologies they use for the AI here is, I think it's similar to the one they use in Suramar, where. I think they call it making the city breathe or they I've heard in like Q and A's or talks that they've talked about that way where it's like you have a vendor who walks around and it's not just set it like it's varied and things set each other off. And this was something that they tried to introduce during WAD and they haven't really, I didn't think they really perfected until Suramar. And the, my biggest gripe with Suramar was the fact that you really couldn't do much there, right? There was a few world quests, but you were an enemy. And I think it's really yeah. interesting that this is, you're actually going to really get to, feel the city breathe and be in it. Yeah, hopefully you know? if uh you know if they make this any anything like the city of Suramar, it's gonna be uh pretty incredible. So if you look at uh Suramar, they have a lot of tiny details. Like they have a classroom. Like uh, you know, they got just they got a bunch of little details like that throughout Suramar. Yeah, it's crazy. And um so you've actually got it got it into Burrows, you know, felt around in it. Um have you seen an auction house Randy? Uh, no, not yet. I, I, you, I, I would say I haven't looked around long enough to really have a... Do you think a, there's going to be like, an auction house? I, I heard little snippets that there might be, which, to be honest, 
I think I would be kind of okay with. Yeah. Oh, we got a screenshot right here that maybe this might be an auction house. I can see that. I I don't know. I'm hoping because I feel like with a city of this size, I don't want to have to be. I actually wouldn't matter to me because in engineering, they'd probably put an engineering one in at least. But with a city of this size, you don't want to have to feel like you have to leave it. Like this should be where you get to set up camp for the entire expansion. Yeah. And really bunker down there, you know. Especially if they put you know a ton of details into it. You want to? Yeah, I would. I'd hate it to go to waste, especially an auction house gives the city such lasting power. Like I still occasionally, which I think actually there haven't been many cities with an auction house lately. Yeah, honestly, just I think they should put an auction house in it. I, I know they, they try to make that only an engineering thing, but I feel like everyone deserves it in this city. And, you know, yeah, I agree. The next, our next topic is something that I, me and Ro don't know a ton about. We know we've obviously read articles, but. Uh, some that Soul has gotten a ton of hands-on experience with, or at least some, so he'll sort of lead the charge here. What, what do you, what's your opinion on the whole uh, VFA Island Expeditions? They're, like, give me your, your uh, thoughts. They're okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I see Island Expeditions as, like, if you guys have played through the Seeding Shore Battleground, yeah. where you jump off a ship, you do stuff, you try to mine for stuff while the other team is trying to beat your ass to the ground. It's pretty much that, except on a much smaller scale. And there's a bunch of stuff in the way of it, too. You have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of little enemies to deal with. You have some kind of, like, I guess you, you could consider them as, like, sub-objectives where you might be trying to solve a problem. Like, there might be something in the way, and in order to get it out of the way, you need to find some sort of item on the ground, like a torch. Like I remember, I, I was going around with me and and my other the other people in my in my three man team. We find like this torch. I found this like this torch on the ground, and I also happened to find kind of nearby um, a dude that's like stuck in a bunch of vines. It's like, oh help me, dude, help me! And I, yeah, at first I tried to click on him. I couldn't free him, and it wasn't until I, I kind of put two and two together. I'm like, oh, if I take this torch and I burn the vines, hopefully the guy doesn't die. He gets out of it, and sure enough, he did. And he gave me a little bit of this Azerite stuff. And all you're doing is trying is is trying to get Azerite. Um, you hit a certain goal before the other team does. So there's a there's a bit of dynamic there with uh, you two with the two teams starting in different areas. So you'll be encountering things slightly differently. And then of course there's the interaction between the teams themselves, where you might be trying to kick each other's butts, because uh, that of course is going to slow down the amounts of Azerite that they're picking up. And also, the longer that the enemies are alive, or the longer that you're alive, if either of you die, um, a number of Azerite will get traded to the enemy, which I think oh, is okay. which I think is kind of cool. Um, the AI is pretty convincing. Uh, it at least has that feel of okay, they're actually trying to you know maybe retreat a little bit, try to kite me around, lure me away, or otherwise crowd control me that's something that i saw a number of times but but for the most part because we were just working with the normal mode and we were our item level was bumped up or we were set to max level and everything we pretty much wiped the floor with with the team uh yeah. to the point where we kind of pushed them back to like their graveyard and we kind of camped them for a little bit until we realized okay we're you know there, there's no point just trying to camp them uh let's just get out of here and continue farming for azurite so right. it feels all right so far right now it just feels very undone uh yeah. very, very unfinished there's just not a lot to go I mean, for the most part you can kind of ignore the team and if you can just farm stuff harder than they can then you'll probably win yeah i think the really important thing you bring up here is there's going to be an ai controlled team uh, your enemies um and that ai has to be tuned really well because the goal is to make it seem like a player, which is a hard task, but it's like that AI has to be tuned really well, or it can either be overtuned and everything shit, or undertuned and it's such a joke that who cares? Like I think they really need to focus on tuning that AI. Of course, that just comes down to testing and everything. Now, and you um, don't want them to overtune it either. Yes. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I'd be better to to err on the side of overtune than undertune. Now, a big thing about these also is that they're random, or they're supposed to be, uh, like, what do they call it? procedurally generated? Is that the word they use, Saul? Uh, I don't know if it's so much that, but it's something like that. Yeah, anyway, it's, it's not like the, It's not like the islands are themselves are procedurally generated, but, like, some of the objectives, those are going to be mm -hmm. different. Um, also, 
I, I think it depends on, I, I, you know, actually, I don't think it depends on the time of day, real time, but sometimes you might be coming here, like, and it might be bright and sunny outside, or it might be nighttime, so you'll see different sets of mobs. Like, at one moment, you might see just a bunch of crabs and other different animals, and at the time, you might see, like, the mogu or other races, yeah. too. And I, I, I've heard this being uh, touted as one of the better features about it, because it's supposed to make it infinitely replayable. I think that's one of the words that they tossed yeah. around during the um, during the when the whole announcement of it. And I I don't know. I have my doubts. Um, now is it just I, this one map on uh, BFA right I think, now? Oh, it's probably. just one map right now. And they've said that they were going to probably have. I remember during the dev um, sort of whatever you call them and BFA BlizzCon whatever. They had said they're gonna have like four or five islands, or maybe three. Um, but then they were gonna have all these random stuff. But my problem with it is that it has to be really random for it to be interesting. Because who I don't know, I I I play Dungeons and Dragons, right? And I DM. So for me, damage is damage. It doesn't matter if I'm attacking a mogu or if I'm attacking a crab. They basically do the exact same shit, you know? Like, yeah, it's like it's like even if like the what you do even though the things that are there are random your objective is still always going to be the same which is yeah. to get stuff before the other team dies and then and there's gonna be stuff that you're gonna see again and again like maybe if you run it a hundred times you won't see the exact exact same experience every both times but like there will be several times where it feels like the exact same experience because maybe some mobs were shift on position or whatever but by and large it would feel very similar I, I just don't think it's going to be able to deliver on the random that it said it promises. Uh, how many of these well, did you run the alpha? I think like four or five. And did they like all that. feel different from each other or not? They kind of did because these islands are, they're kind of big. I would say like they're, they feel bigger than the Sea of the Inshore Battleground. That's for sure. Uh, because okay. there are a lot of different little places you can go to, and your starting points might change. So you might not find yourself uh, wandering too far away from the path, because if you happen to die, you go, at least from my experience, if you die, you go all the way back to your ship, the, the starting point, which can be really far away if you happen to be wandering really deep in there, and then for whatever reason, the other team kills you, or you just die to mobs. And sometimes, and, and if, you're not caref uh, if you're not careful, some of these mobs, they'll just, they'll just destroy you. Um, yeah, but that's given our our item level and all that. Yeah. So I guess one of the questions we, we uh, us and Solid sort of talked about this previously, and one of the questions we brought up is like, what sort of rewards would would they, these have to give you for them to continue to be relevant past maybe the first two or three months of the expansion? Like, let's say relevant past the first raid release. What would you think, Sol, for them to have for, for them to be that relevant? Well, the only thing that's going to give uh, a mode like this or any mode really like a lot of staying power is going to be this whole AP or Azurite power, whatever they're going to call this, uh, the currency. Um, it, it needs to give like a pretty good amount of Azurite for me to be like, okay, I, I, I better do this because maybe if I do my daily island expedition for the day, I get like a nice bonus to it. Um, but as for like anything else, like like if it's like gear or something like that, that probably isn't going to pull me back in over and over again. Because if it's gear, just like anything else, gear eventually expires unless it Titan Forges. But if the if Titan Forging is in fact going to get a nerf, and we haven't really learned anything about how that's going to work in Battle for Azeroth, mm -hmm. um, that's not going to be enough to pull me back in. Sure. Uh, so, so in my opinion, like Azerite would be like the one. Uh, would be the thing that would make me even bother with this anymore. Sure, and for the listeners or viewers or whatever at home who I don't have alpha experience, so I'd, I'd say most likely most of them, um, could you compare and contrast this with scenarios from uh, Mr. Pandaria? I don't know if you, you remember scenarios. Like, what, what do you think the big key differences are? Because obviously they're similar because... They're three-player content, role agnostic. But other, like other than that, what really defines them as being more than just a scenario clone? Uh, they're, I'd say they're fundamentally different. It's you want to think of these not so much as scenarios like in MOP, but more like mini battlegrounds, uh, PVE 
uh, based battlegrounds where again you know different objectives but uh, ultimately your goal is the same to get Azrai before the rest of the team so really you're just trying to mine faster than the others it's the story between the start and the end though that makes that whole dynamic and and different feel because to be honest with with Miss Pandaria scenarios I don't even think I, I don't even think I've done all of them uh, yeah. let alone doing them in like the mythic mode or heroic mode or whatever harder difficulty that they were at because um, at that time there wasn't much motivation for me to do those because all of those gave me were I believe like valor points and like some gold yeah, or whatever they and in throwaway gear because... yeah and, and there were plenty of other sources for me to cap out and once I did there was no need for me to do certain other things such as the scenario so I don't know. A part of me thinks that's why scenarios sort of went away for a while because they stopped having a place as for like, you know, what's what's your daily or weekly activity going to be this week in the yeah. World of Warcraft, folks? And uh, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't have the data, but I'm just kind of skeptic that uh, that scenarios really had a good place at the time and, and Blizzard's banking on that they will have a place this time. Thanks yeah, to, uh, as I think that I was just saying, I think that, yeah, that's what they're banking on. They're banking on the AP rewards being what keeps them relevant and keeps them important. Now, my, in my eyes, what made scenarios fail and what's sadly, I think, going to make um, the Island Expeditions fail is the whole role agnostic thing. Now, I understand why they do it. It's so that they give you a type of content that you can do with any, any like two other of your friends. doesn't matter. Like, it wouldn't matter if me, Soul, and Ro were all healers. We could do it. But the problem is when you make something that's role agnostic, either it's it's not really, and if you go in there with three healers, it's going to be a shit show. Like um, the the end events for the Legion invasions for a while were like that. Or it makes something that is role agnostic, but it's if you have three DPS, it's a joke because the mobs just go down. I feel like role agnostic is such a hard thing to get right. Uh, I don't see why they couldn't make these things like a five-man, like what's the big deal? Yeah, right. Like, I think, it's probably because they don't want to compete in the dungeon space, I think. Yeah, I, I think that this is something that is just made for, that they intend for this to be a quick queue. And I think that given the size and everything that you're doing, I think five people would be a bit too much. It'd be easy. Because yeah. from there, it would be a game of pull as much as you can, AOE all of it down, and then move on. Um, and, then, and then, of course, because there's a there's supposed to be a PvP version of it, then that kind of adds into the to the dynamic too. That's when you might want to get into like the whole, okay, let's yeah. let's think of like what's a good comp to to mess with the enemy as well as take out the rest of these mods. Because because I went in as a tank, obviously, so I was able mm -hmm. to like pull a whole bunch of stuff and and not really worry about it. So I feel like I'm kind of at an advantage there. Yeah. Uh, but then we'll just let's see like just how the more difficult modes work out. Because at the very least, I did see that there were some difficult mobs that. That they just they just outright killed me, and I think is because maybe I was undergeared, maybe there were mechanics that I wasn't paying attention to, something like that. But there could be instances where, depending on the comp that you have, you will be tackling this this content a little bit differently. Like if there's like yeah. some really hard hitting mobs and you don't have a tank or a healer, okay, maybe you shouldn't mess with those things. Or if there mm -hmm. is something that involves like certain amounts of CC, maybe you shouldn't have had like this comp set up, you should have had a more CC related comp. It, it just depends on the, well, like if there's going to be a higher level play, how is skill going to play in? Or is this just going to be like eh, something to, to burn through? And, and, and that's why, yeah, that, that's why I would really, Part of me kind of wants, and maybe this is controversial, but I think this should have like a maximum item level cap, so we don't just Ooh. like destroy the place. I think if if they're gonna do that, it would I not a maximum item level cap. I think it should be something like challenge mode dungeons were, or I guess time walking dungeons is a more recent example where it just brings your down. That would be a terrible idea. I would look well, or or they could do what the PvP thing does. I know that that has shitty fanfare. Or what they're going to be doing to PvP, where they normalize the eye level of your gear with with your stats in mind. I think that would be interesting. Um, there's a lot of problems with that. Um, they usually fucks over classes that are really requiring really require one stat, like a shadow priest or something like that. So they're going to have to get it right if they're going to do it. Um, something I think is interesting, and the only place where I can see um, these island expeditions actually having a place in the extended life, and that's in PvP which I know we haven't got our hands on the PvP one, 
but I'm thinking that's where it's really going to be able to shine. And it might, it's a big might, turn into almost a new threes arena environment, if you know what I mean. It could possibly be something like that. But then that kind of goes to the earlier thing that we were talking about, about possibly going to the, into stat templates. Because then yeah. we're going to wonder, okay, so so is there going to be two kinds of island expeditions? I mean, there are. It's going to be a PvE yeah, and a PvE one. But it's going to be a matter of, okay, the PvE one, so is gear going to matter? Uh, and while, while in PvP it's not because of stat templates? Or is it going to be treated as a very heavily regulated thing? Where yeah, I don't know. I'd figure... You use stat, you know, stat templates. I'd figure that they'd have uh, that they'd have for the PvP one, obviously the gear regularization, because that's that's supposed to be standard for PvP. And for the PvE one, I don't. I think it'd be interesting, but I don't foresee them, you know, having a set eye level cap that it puts you to. Yeah, and with the PvP one is if you don't have like two other friends that know PvP, you're probably gonna go up against people that are running like an actual threes comp. Yeah, and right. just like roll your face over every time. But I, yeah. I think it's interesting because in the PvP idea, like maybe this would be a, a way to sort of bridge the gap between PvP and PvE players because, yeah, maybe you don't know PvP, but if you're a fucking a mythic raider, you know how to kill mobs like nobody's business. You might not know how to like deal with like whatever it is, dodging or whatever you do in PvP. I don't PvP. <laughs> anyway. Um, Obviously, the biggest, the biggest thing this week was the dev Q and A, um, and I would say if you want, because uh, we're gonna flash through this quickly because we only have a short amount of time left in the show, um, we want to get to other topics. But if you want to, what I would consider to be a, a beautiful, a great sort of summation of everything that was said and good speculation on in general, Soul made a great video on it. I'd say it was like forty minutes, right, Soul? Yeah, something like that. It was. A, think, it was a long summary. <laughs> you can say that. I it's yeah if you want to call it a summary I think it was a great video I'll put it to you that way that's um that that's what I well I I watched that after I'd watched the actual one to sort of I guess what do you call it form my ideas and get everything in place enough of a plug you, you know how to check them out uh but let's talk about what we learned here uh the first big one is the Zandalari Paladins known as Prelates is that right how do you say it is it not Prelates it's Prelates Prelates. It's a, a prelates, as I believe, prelates. the the most accepted. Oh, like zealots? Oh, okay. Something like yeah, friends with anyway, zealots. You got Zandalari prelates, and that was given a solid maybe. Now, Zandalari um, prelates or prelates? I I say I like prelates personally. <laughs> How about pilates? Yeah. Yeah, pilates. They like pilates. They have something that people have been talking about a lot because I guess in the class hall for is this true? Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the class hall for um, paladins, weren't there like trolls or something like that? Well, Not to my the uh, what was yeah, the, I don't think there is. They they have a demon, but yeah. They were yeah. trying to think. What was the reason? Oh, I don't remember. It was something to do with anyway. They people had been saying that there'd be Zandalari paladins, and Blizzard had not been confirming that. But we got a maybe, which if you don't know the wow dev talk a maybe is is like a solid yes <laughs> yeah. but honestly like usually okay usually if if they think there's zero chance of something happening they'll say no and if there's a chance there's a way what's you, you know what they say there's a chance you know you gotta gotta go for it so i'm, I'm really gonna say something like oh we haven't planned we have nothing planned at this time but i think yeah. the thing they said maybe but uh you know Anyway, it's we like, got there Zandalari. might be something that happens. I think we got Zandalari Paletti's huge deal. Another thing that they brought up was that for like their design choice at the moment, they want allied races to come in pairs, which is really interesting because it makes you think what are the pairs we got so far? So obviously we have um Zandalari Troll Dark on George, of course. We're confirmed to have both um Draenor orcs and culture as humans. So I guess those are probably a pair too, right? Are there any other confirmed or highly speculated races that we don't have a pair yet? I mean, obviously Volpirin's hanging loose, but um, are there any other big races that people are talking about a lot? Well, I think one that people's wanted to see for a long time is like, like some sort of tinker. Yeah, like a t like a um, almost like a Jeeves type guy. Don't you have a character on your show like that, Soul? Oh yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. Like, something like that. People have been talking about that a lot. Like, especially now with the Titans and all that, having a Titan, like, mecha gnome character would not be out, out of the works here. But I think it's an interesting that, at least at the moment, they said they might break it later that there's a pair of things. So next time we get allied race speculation, it's fun to think about what's on the other end of that. Like, what pairs with Coulter, what no, no, what pairs with Volpirin? I think, you know, what's uh, the lineup version? Like, the Tinker thing would be would fit really well. Yeah, I think it would, too. The, if the gnome lore is uh, the gnomes, as we know them in Alliance, they're cursed with the curse of flesh. So that's yeah. how they are. They used to be like memorons, you know, just a bunch of tiny exactly. memorons running around. Um, in, I don't know. In like, in like the context of uh, the battle for Azeroth, though, if we're if we have like Volpirans in mind or Volt, yeah, whatever they're however they're pronounced, yeah, um, people have talked about um, those snake dudes, uh, the Sethrak, I believe is what they're called, uh, as well as the Tortolan, the those little tortoise. Looking, oh, yeah, towards looking dude. That's true. You know, people, people think... have been saying like those can or should uh, be an allied race. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not that into it, so I haven't really gotten that much into that sort of speculation. I mean, I another, another allied race that I've been hearing about is because obviously we can go back to previous expansions. People we are saying the Jinyu, which if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, the fish people from Mop, you, you all remember them, oh, might yeah. be becoming an alliance allied race. And I'm thinking if they're going to give you Jin Yu, they're probably going to be giving us Ho Jin or whatever. And I actually have some interesting evidence to back this up. One of my friends, um, they were using the coin of many faces, which, you know, turns you into a race, like a playable race. All right. And they got turned into a Jin Yu. Like, what the heck's about that? Probably a glitch, but, eh, you know, you never know. Well, I'm, turning into all sorts of, I, well, I'm, I'm trying to remember off memory. I mean, I've, I've turned into all sorts of weird things. As uh, we with that without a whole coin, I think I've turned into like one of those leper gnomes too. Yeah, that's confirmed. Uh, yeah, honestly, if they, if they made leper gnomes, it'd have to be horde, and I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm a gnome at heart. I'm you know, I'm small inside. Oh, I forgot. I race changed to a goblin, so I'm still small. I've always been small. <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. Okay, You're just small. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, the, another big thing they stressed during the dev Q and A was sort of their philosophy when going into class changes, and that's class different, uh, different in nation. I can't say words right now, but basically it means they want to make classes different from each other. Now that's they want classes to be non-homogeneous. I think this is generally a good thing. Um, they said the way they're going about it's a little bit funky, you know. Um, Obviously, they're saying they want to deprune and bring back a lot of uh, old uh, abilities that classes had, but also they want to they want to get rid of abilities for classes so that other classes uh, feel different. Ian said they want to get rid of sameness. So, for example, a ton of people are losing their AOE stuns for the so that what monks feel special having their AOE stun, which is going to be baked in. What well, do you guys think about this? You know what's going to happen is going to be the same thing that was like in BC and Wrath or whatever. People are going to start stop taking other classes and start taking others over yeah. that. Especially you, for Mythic Pluses. Yeah, yeah like I can see uh, any monks, Mistweavers, Brewmasters, Windwalkers becoming like a requirement to have a couple during Mythic Pluses for that leg sweep. Yeah, so no, it's just, I, think, I mean, it's going to make it to where people playing certain class going to make it really hard for them to get in. And it's just, yeah. And then they're going to go back to, oh, let's just give everybody the same shit again like we have it right now. The classic pendulum. And they, another thing they said is that they want to avoid adding abilities, which kind of goes to harken to something that we were talking about where we, it doesn't seem like they're going to be adding a new ability tier to this expansion. It's because they think they already have enough. It's kind of the design philosophy of that. And I don't know how I feel about that. I really like getting new abilities. And I think that the fact that we're in a meta where abilities are so rarely added is kind of eh. You know what I'm saying? Well, on the other side of things, because I feel the opposite way, I don't, I, I don't mind not getting anything new as long as what we have is freaking awesome. Um, but but it, it's such a complicated conversation to have. But I mean, on the other side of things, we can get new abilities if they wanted to, just like what 
just like what they had said during the dev Q&A. They can make abilities, you know, all, all the damn time. The problem is, though, is that it will starts watering down what we already do have. And then, and then it makes you wonder, okay, you know, for the sake of getting a new ability, what do we lose in the meantime? Like, how does our rotation change? Does that mean our rotation is going to get, is supposed to get that, that much more longer and complicated? Or are we going to, as players, decide or kind of figure out and sim what's the best rotation? And then from there, we players are going to end up um, cutting out abilities on our own. So it, it, it kind of happens the same way. And that's how it was uh, before they started doing this sort of pruning or, or whatnot. We stopped using certain abilities or stopped you know, applying abilities a certain way because that was a more optimum way to go. And um, I think another thing that's interesting as far as class science, because that's for a lot of what, this, if you didn't watch the dev Q&A, again, suggest Soul's video on it, but a lot of what it was about was about class design. They talked a lot about internally how they do it. And, they said they've really seen just how successful Mythic Dungeons are. And I think everyone agrees that the Mythic Dungeons have really revolutionized how so everyone plays well. Um, but they've seen how successful it is, so it's becoming a little bit more of a consideration in class design. However, they say that it's 50-50 with raids. So I think that means is that they're trying to push closer to like having them be equally important. I don't really know how I feel about this. I've always thought that raids should be the end game, end game what everything's about. And I know a lot of people disagree with that, but I'm, I'm wondering what are your guys' thoughts on Mythic Dungeons becoming the new serious endgame content and having sort of things be tailored more towards them than they have been in the previous expansions? Uh, I think, um, well, raids, first of all, are probably going to be the, you know, the big end game. Cause then they say that you can only get like certain sets for your necklace doing raids. Yeah, it's, yeah, but you're also probably going to be able to get only specific like things for your Azerite pieces from dungeons too, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a good thing though, because I mean, not everybody wants to put in the time or commitment for a team. So if they can just do their mythics every week and get what they need, then more power to them. Yeah, and the other big thing that they were talking about as far as gear is concerned is that they want to make it so that primary stats are more valuable, right? So like your strength, your intellect, your agility are going to be more valuable than your, all your secondary stats. And the reason they said for this, they, they, they gave multiple reasons, but a lot of it was that they wanted to make getting an upgrade feel like getting an upgrade. Like they want item level to be king. And it really isn't at this time. Like I know that I'm not equipping, and of course, just because of tier. And I think the fact they're getting rid of tiers also for this reason, it's like I'm not equipping an a 985 piece of tier gear because I got to wear the old tier, right? Like they, they want to make that not the, not the norm. They want to make item level king. Um, the, another thing they were talking about is they want to make simming less required. Like I know personally, whenever I get a piece of gear, I don't sim myself because I'm lazy, but I have a buddy for me who sims uh, <laughs> and he'll usually run it through, you know, the old matrix, you know, just to see how it does. And, they want to make that not the thing. They want you to be able to like look at an item and be like, this is an upgrade, this is not an upgrade. So what do you think about this? Do you think that this will actually do anything or that item that uh, stats will always be king? That's a loaded lot of stuff. Um, well, with regard, like I support that. I'm, I'm down for uh, players for the most part being able to just kind of eyeball and be like, okay, cool. But this item level's higher, so it's probably better. But... Let me take a quick glance at the secondary stats and see what they have to offer. And if I see that, oh, it offers the two really shitty secondaries, whereas the gear that I have is like the two better uh, secondaries, then chances are even, even just eyeballing it, I can probably make a safe guess and say, you know, what I have is, is still better because this upgrade, this supposed upgrade is only like five or 10 item levels higher. Um, and I think, that's what, I think that's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to make it so that um, it, it, it still makes it feel uh, good to take a look at its stats and see what matters or not, but they don't want it to be like a priority where you have to like run it through like this third party calculator or whatnot, because otherwise, if they did want to go that route, then they would just sit, they would just sim stuff themselves and then they would and then they would just have that thing translated directly to the player. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to get this many more stats. This will get you that much more potential output based on whatever uh, whatever calculations Blizzard provides. Um, so it, it, 
I don't, I don't think it really takes the simming away from people because at the super high end, you're still going to be doing that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and you, and you're still going to be, ta- uh, you're still going to be taking a look, but for, but for the most part, as long as players follow the rules that you prioritize item level first, and then within a certain threshold of that item level, let's take a look at the secondaries. And if the secondaries, um, are budgeted in, in a different way, or if they're like crappier secondaries than what you want, then cool. Those are the things. Uh, then that's going to be taken into consideration too. And yeah. in talking about this, one of the ways they've sort of said that they're trying to do this is for classes like let's use Shadow Priest as an example. I think it's a fantastic example where like if you're a Shadow Priest and the Priest doesn't have gear, you don't equip it. They're going to be trying to make the base amount of haste you have higher, like through various means, so that the extra haste you get on gear is less important. So like, if you get a fresh Shadow Priest at max level with a, some shitty leveling gear, it's going to be at a higher point than it would be normally. So that you can still increase your, your haste with haste gear, but it's less important. I think that's an interesting way of going about it. Um, it's also going to affect the curve as far as the expansion is concerned, because usually s- classes that are still based on one stat, like Shadow Priest, for example, get better as the expansion goes on because they get more and more of that stat. So I'm really just interested to see how it all plays out, honestly. Yeah, and, and it's going to be good because I remember during EN, I wouldn't equip shit that was like 15 or 20 eye levels ahead just because of the stats we had. So Yeah, 100%. And I don't mind that the more important, you know, the, the, the more uh, you put more scrutiny behind uh, ring slots because you know we're not going to care about a next slot for for this expansion. Um, I don't mind that that there's more scrutiny there with secondaries than uh, than item levels since you only get stamina and and your secondary on those. Yeah, so I don't like what, there's that. there was some 885 ring that someone sent to me recently. It's like BIS for the shadow or whatever. I feel what it's called, but it was it was just because it had a shit ton of haste. You know, I think. Um, this also may reduce the chance of having another Arcano Crystal or something of that kind of nature, where something is just so powerful because of all the stats it offers. But we'll Actually, see. I believe I believe it was data mine that someone did find a trinket or something like that that pretty much was an Arcana Crystal. I think it was Jesus. kind of low level, but yeah, I think I did see something there. Yeah, I don't know. Got... The, Ar- the Arcano Crystal, in my opinion, is one of the bigger failures of Six Mansion. Yeah, and I think as the as one you're talking about is like called something loaded dice or something like that. I think oh, something like that. Yeah, but I believe yeah, they I... actually changed it so it doesn't have like the haste crit stuff. It's like oh, the, okay. the yeah, leech okay. and the speed or whatever else. Another thing that they were talking about with design philosophy is that they decided, and this you can see if you look at a lot of the class changes, that a lot of the artifact traits aren't going to be baked in to the classes. Instead, they're going to come up as a talent. And a lot of people on the forums apparently are kind of pissed PO'd about this a little bit, which I can understand. But their reason behind it was if it, if you see if it's a talent, they're actually going to be able to see whether or not people need it or not. Because if everyone across the board is picking because it's so vital to their class, then sure, they'll baseline it. But their design philosophy is let's throw it into the water as a talent and let's see how many people actually pick it and how it actually affects DPS. I think that's an interesting way of going about it overall. One of the things they're doing with talents is they want to, move, we talked about this when we are talking about uh, prop talent, of course, they haven't really done it yet, but they want to move similar talents into the same row. So like you'd have a bunch of single target talents, a bunch of AOE talents. And the idea for this was that you'd be switching talents less because if you're going on Veramathris or um, what's another good single target fight, who, who cares, right? If you're going Veramathris, you're not going to switch into your single target abilities, or if you're going on you're not going to switch into your multi-target abilities. But instead, since you're only going to have your single target on one row and your multi-target on another, you're just going to keep your abilities how they are. I think that's interesting. It's going to make the, the choices more meaningful, right? Because it's like you're looking at a bunch of things in the same row. I don't know. Overall, I like switching between fights abilities. So part of me is kind of pissed that that's going to be slightly brought away, but I don't know. What do you think about this, Sol? hate it I, really? I i i well like i said earlier in in the show like i'm just not a fan of talent rows because it's it has too much of a diablo 3 feel where you're just yeah. kind of swapping your load out um and and to me from a design standpoint 
if you can easily swap out your abilities and skills for a given for a given encounter, then that means that you're balancing encounters under the assumption that every class has access to all of their talents and, abil and yeah. abilities and skills. So, so it, it waters down the meaning behind these choices that we make because it's assumed that we can always make a choice. So it's like we have everything. It's just a matter yeah. of what happens to be equipped. But then I would think, I would think if that's your philosophy, then you'd like the, what they're, the direction they're moving in because this is, this is built where like you have one row of AOE, so you're less likely to change for an AOE fight, I guess. Right, but then it just go. But then that, uh, you know, it, it, with going in that direction, then you just stop making choices. You just make your favorite, and yeah. then, like you're done. Or which BAS. Is okay. Yeah, which is okay. But when it comes to like the essence of what a talent means, this is something that's meant to define your class. Mm -hmm. And there, there's an element of players that are going to just do whatever icy veins or whatever sims tell them. Yeah, and like then, that's the, kind of what I do, honestly. Yeah, I, and, I, I figure and, stuff out myself still, but you know. and that's totally fine. Uh, and then there are other people like me that will just choose their favorite because it makes them feel really good too. But I think that yeah. the sort of change that Blizzard is doing just isn't enough. That it still doesn't give players the agency to define themselves. It, like, I would just like to see this thing go away. The whole talent row thing go away and go yeah. to a, not exactly the trees that we had before, but something heavily modified like that to, to really give a lot of choice and meaning to the decisions that we make as a class to the point where, yeah. and another, this would be controversial, uh, controversial, but if you make a certain talent choice under this new kind of system that I, that, that I can't even really uh, uh, illustrate right now, that it would even define like your gear choices for like for like the entire tier or so like it's going to be very yeah. hard for you to spec yourself that way and i uh, to me and that's what i was thinking thing. what i was and here's something that i've been thinking about for a little while since, since we got the artifact weapons and now the necklace i was thinking that the artifact weapon specifically was their way of slowly bringing us away from the talent trees and that maybe they're that they were trying to make talent trees a little bit less meaningful so that at some point they can phase them out and have an artifact system be your talent tree. Yeah. I mean, I the, talent, the talent tree itself is a really outdated, you know, yeah. piece. So and talking about something of... that is polarizing and some people say is outdated, Master Looter. We, it seems, and now in the, during the Q&A, if you listen to what they actually said, they said that they're going to be making personal loot more of uh, more of what the default is now when they say default i wonder if they mean like literally just it's the default what it's what it's automatically set to or if they mean a lot of people are taking this to mean that they're getting rid of master looter now what do you think you're sold in the alpha can you switch it to master looter um i haven't tried switching to raid yet uh so that i can't say but right now personal loot is already the default it will whenever you set up a raid or anything like that yeah i don't so, I don't understand why they people are saying that they're going to get get rid of mass looter. I don't think they should. I think they should leave the option open. Um, well, the the question that was asked, and I'm paraphrasing here, the question yeah. was, you know, is there an expectation that personal loot is going to be like the thing uh, going into the battle for Azeroth? And the short answer that they gave was yes. But at the end of that entire long winded long winded thing that they said. They also said that they're going to be looking for feedback. So yeah. I would strongly suggest that you know people scream loud forums. and proud I was, about, you know, what, what they think. I, I mean, I have, the guild that I'm in right now uses personal loot. And they had toyed with the idea from boss to boss, switching to master looter for like tier and stuff. Um, and one of the reasons they had addressed in the Q&A why, why they wanted it more on personal was because they thought that it made funneling gear harder for mythic split runs. But I don't think that's true at all. Um, well, they were saying that they didn't want like the mythic race. They didn't want to superpower one character, so whatever. You can that still means. do that with. I guess you can't with the eye level thing. Well, I don't that, know. I I I don't want to see him get rid of master looter. I even though I don't use it at the moment, I like the option, and I'd hate. I mean, who uses DKP anymore? But something like DKP is like it's such in my eyes such a core part of raiding and WoW is. How does your guild deal with loot distribution? For a lot of people, that's what the officers do. It's going to yeah. really hurt a guild setup. And I feel like this is moving towards a dangerous location they are, which is like 
having might as well uh, just plug it, right? If I was gonna say, assuming that the people who are playing raids are plugging it, right? Because other than mythic level, every other raid is pluggable, and even mythic too, honestly. And the fact that it's gonna now be default personal, and that that's what they're pushing for, like that's a pug system. I feel like guilds shouldn't have to do it. I'm PO'd about this, honestly. And if I see this going through, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make a fuss. And Ro can tell you, Dab knows how to make one heck of a fuss. <laughs> and, and and I think you should too. Like, I'm not a fan of something like the, of of them removing something like that either, or other or otherwise limiting choice. That's something that I'm yeah. very much not a fan of. I mean, by by doing something like this, and you know, when they did that with dungeons, it it kind of threatens to make. Wow, play the game for us. Yeah, uh, it, exactly. And, and I don't. And, I and don't they want to make Wow. It seems like they want to make Wow a solo experience, and that's just not what Wow is. Well, I, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even go that. I wouldn't go that far, though. Uh, or at least I wouldn't jump to that sort of conclusion. Um, but that's that, that's an entirely opinion of mine. Um, I just don't like that they're removing that sort of choice from us um you know we should be able to choose whether or not we want to have like this sort of system and the kind of the th the, what they're trying to solve they're trying to solve a problem that takes care of like such a small element of the community it, it now now don't get me wrong they're a premier they're local, yeah. uh side of it they're they're high profile they're the ones that make the news and all that stuff but i don't think that what you know their sorts of actions the consequences of those shouldn't affect everybody. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. And I mean, if they have a problem with, like, I don't know, everybody finishing the mythic shit in the race, like, in a week, then make the... Oh, it's self-tiered. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Nah, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, that's well, I mean, obviously just a spitball here. They shouldn't have... Um, you shouldn't be getting rid of Master Looter because ten mythic guilds are doing yeah. this. I don't think it's because of Mythic Guild. That might be the example they gave, but I believe that it's entirely to promote pug culture. On a different uh, note. Oh, I think it's totally the opposite. Because, I mean, they're doing the whole, they, they're pushing the whole community tool. They do want people to, um, you know, to develop relationships. I don't think they're doing it right. Uh, but yeah. I don't think that they're trying to necessarily push pugs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And plus, if uh, you anyway. push pugs onto people, then the guilds starts disappearing. And yeah, I, I, I just, for me, personal loot, it rubs me the wrong way when it's forced. Like, I already hate the fact that if you're in a pug group, you have to use personal loot. Like, if it's some percent pug, right? I don't know if you guys know about this. Anyway, different topic. Uh, mission tables, they talked about them a little bit. They said they're not going to be required. Now, this could mean a ton of different things. I'm sure they're going to give Azerite power. I'm sure they're going to give some gold. I don't know if it's going to be... I'm hoping they're not as prevalent as they were this expansion, honestly. They were prevalent? They were pretty prevalent. I mean, if you... For the getting your... At the beginning, at least, right? Because you had to unlock the like order camera. hall mission, right? And that was all doing mission tables. So or, it's, it's funny because, like, I'll, I guess I followed the whole mission thing to a T because I didn't feel that... Um, I didn't feel that whole time gate thing because I was, really? you know, every time, every time a mission finished, I diligently went back, turned that stuff in. That's and this is me power leveling language. through and everything. I was power leveling through, even though there were those, you know, kind of long mission times between stuff, even though I had to do like multiple missions as part of a quest. But by the time I completed everything, everything would just, was just kind of, it just kind of fell into step. Yeah. And, and I definitely yeah. see where things don't fall into step. It's when you, like power level yourself or you level yourself through uh, legion invasions or legion assault objectives and stuff so you're like at max level but you barely started your order hall campaign so you feel really really hamstrung at that point but before that um it, it, at least as intended it seemed okay with the exception of a couple of classes that i think were bugged i think warriors were especially bugged where they had super long mission times and it took them like a number of weeks or so to fix yeah. that. And by then, warriors felt like really shitty <laughs> about yeah, themselves. Yeah. Uh, but but that that felt fine. To me. I, mean, I, I see what I see what you're saying. Like afterwards, though. Um, but at least at the start of Legion, it felt perfectly fine. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, if mission tables are going to be a thing for a while now. 
they obviously were introduced in WAD, and I think a lot of people hated them in WAD. People kind of forgot about that in Legion, partially because there's, there's so many more players in Legion than there were in WAD that, like, the community's bigger. And so pe a lot of people who were vocal in WAD, they've sort of been drowned out by people who just don't give a shit about that sort of stuff. Um, and I think the big problem in WAD, just to touch on that, was that mission tables were your only content to do on a daily basis. Like, I log in to do my mission tables. And that's what people's problem was. It wasn't necessarily that, like, they existed. It was that it was the only thing you could do. And I don't think that's a problem we had in Legion. So I'm hoping that that means it's not going to be a problem we're going to have in BFA. Um, just let's go through it quickly because we don't have much more time here. Um, they've planned some changes for Mythic Pluses in, TF, uh, in BFA. Obviously, we talked about it early, uh, last week where you're probably going to be able to customize Keystones, which would be great for the official Raid Radio Mythic Plus race. Stay tuned for that if that ever happens. Also, um, their mechanics like Blight, which I guess Ian said he didn't like, but they, they, they come with this idea of a kiss curse or a little bit of sour sweet, you know, where it's like you got a good side and you got a bad side. I think that's really going to be interesting and brings a sort of a more interesting flavor to Mythic Pluses that they don't have at the moment. Also, they said they want to have a better UI to like facilitate Raider IO in, in that sense, where you can see what keys you've already done during this season and other people can as well. So I think their goal is to try to eliminate the third party requirement of Raider IO, which I think is smart. Artifact knowledge is going to work like it does currently in the game for Azerite knowledge, which we're also going to get, of course. Um, and not just for time reasons, we can't cover the current topic. So if you want to hear our lovely discussion on the current game, which includes Maid's Powers, a few different charities, catch us in here next week, same time at four Eastern Standard Time. Sol, thank you so much for coming. It was fun. I hope it was. Uh, if you're if you're a fan of Soul, of course, give it give us some love. We, we wouldn't argue if you you know follow us on Twitch, on Twitter at Thread Radio, or on YouTube. Uh, the link will be underneath the video thing. Uh, and of course, if for some reason you don't follow Soul, get to what? that. I mean, the guy's amazing, right? Who who doesn't want to yeah, follow I mean, Soul? What? He's kind of a dirtbag. I don't know. A wicked. <laughs> he uploads all the time. Great content. Honestly, he's beating us to the punch. He might be as out of business. Who knows? What? I'm kidding. He, he's an amazing guy. We we loved having him. Uh, am I feeling anything here, Ro? Anything I gotta say? Oh, uh, like and comment if you're on YouTube too. Uh, that's always important. Oh, there we go. I knew I was forgetting something important. Next, well, we have we're introducing a new segment here, um, where essentially we're going to be announcing a theme this week, and you can. Either email us at raidradiocontact at gmail.com, tweet us, tweet at us at Raid Radio, find us on the street and show us a picture, whatever. Just get the images to us of your transmog. Yeah, and uh, in light of St. Patty's Day, we're going to be doing a, a drinking Fantastic. transmog. So, yeah, get those to us. Ooh, we'll I don't know what I got. Exactly. I so, don't know what I'll do. And send them in. We'll show them next week. Uh, thank, thank you for all being here. Goodbye.